Okay. Hello, everybody. We are very, very happy for the opening of this uh, first international conference on uh, API microbiology. And it's my big pleasure and honor to give the floor to Professor Nariman Sekwini from Algeria, uh, who was co-organizer of this event, to uh, give her uh, her speech, introductory speech and official opening speech. Please, uh, Professor Nariman. Thank you, dear Professor Stefan. Dear participants, uh, we are very, ha very happy that uh, you participate with us, and we hope that this uh, conference will uh, with the, uh, help us to exchange our knowledge, uh, in particular concerning the uh, apimicrobiology uh, aspect of uh, bee products. And uh, maybe by the end, we will uh, uh, make uh, uh, as a recommendation to help other scientists to uh, uh, work or to better work or to better choose their method while choosing to work on api microbiology aspect uh, in particular uh, um, uh, <clears throat> propolis honey and all other bee products so uh, welcome again and i hope uh, you will uh, enjoy uh, this uh, conference with us Thank you very, very much, Professor Nariman. Uh, two words from me. We are very happy to, to see all of you here. Um, there are hundreds of thousands of people still dying in the world because of pathogenic bacteria, which can be kept under control, including with natural products. So this is the main reason why we did this conference. Okay, thank you again. And uh, now we can start with the first conference. Please, please, Professor Badial Rusi, you are also co-moderator of this session. Please introduce Professor Nariman before her, uh, he, she activates the share screen. So, uh, good morning. I am very pleased uh, to be uh, in this conference and uh, congratulations to uh, Stefan and Nariman for this nice uh, topic, uh, api pharmacopoeia and microbiology. It's, it is more, uh, more efficient, very, very interesting. And uh, congratulations for uh, the program and also for the thematics. It's very, um, uh, very relevant as thematics. And it's my great pleasure to introduce the co organizer of this conference, Professor uh, Nariman Segini from University of Constantine. And uh, I am very happy to collaborate uh, with Algeria. Uh, as I had been uh, in all cities of Algeria for many times, and we could organize with Stefan on presentiel, in presentiel, perhaps on October, November, a conference in Fez, inshallah. inshallah. So the first uh, speaker is Professor Nariman, and the title of the conference is Influence of the Used Solvent During Extraction of the Antibiofilm Properties and Chemical Composition of Propolis. So Professor Nariman, the floor is yours. Thank you, dear Professor Badia. Thank you. Uh, so, dear participants, uh, I'm very happy to be here with you, and I'm very pleased to uh, present uh, our, a part our, of uh, our investigation on propolis entitled Influence of uh, the Use of Solvent Jude Extraction in the Antibiofilm Properties and Chemical Composition uh, uh, of Propolis. This work is a uh, part of uh, a PhD uh, work of our, my student, named Amina Deyer. And uh, this work has been performed on col collaboration between the University of Constantine and uh, the University of uh, uh, Denizli and Mugla in the Turkish side. Infections are caused by biofilms uh, are being uh, problematic as biofilms eradication with conventional antibiotics is being more and more difficult. Many reports show that antibiotics were often ineffective in biofilm eradication. Multiple resistance mechanisms function jointly in biofilms. In addition, genetic and physiological heterogeneity of cells caused by multi or single cell strategies also appeared. Antimicrobial agents are one of the strategies for uh, inhibition of uh, biofilm formation, but most antimicrobial are not often effective in controlling of biofilm formation. 
Propolis, a natural health product, has attracted increased interest in the treatment or prevention of many infectious diseases. Propolis has been used in folk remedy since ancient times. Egyptians used the anti Active ability of propolis to conserve cadavers. In addition, Romans and Greeks used it as antiseptic and disinfectant in wound healing. Recently, antibiofilm activities of several propolis type have been investigated, and many reports show that propolis extract reduces the biofilm formation. Uh, uh, regarding Algerian propolis, uh, many investigations have been uh, performed on antibacterial activity, and uh, in the literature we can clearly uh, see that Algerian propolis pos um, possesses a more pronounced activity on uh, gram-positive bacteria. Algerian propolis seems to act as an uh, anti-staphylococcus drug, and in addition it has a very interesting activity on beta-emolytic streptococci. But it has a limited activity on gram negative bacteria, in particular on the Escherichia coli, Pseudomonas aeruginosa, Klebsiella pneumonia, and Proteus mirabilis. Regarding antibiofilm activity, before to start our investigation, we do some researches and we found just one work on the antibiofilm activity of Algerian propolis. And this work has used a combination between propolis and honey to uh, uh, and, uh, uh, try to investigate the antibiofilm activity against uh, bacteria biofilms formed on urinary catheters. In this research, authors uh, extract or use uh, Saharian honey uh, uh, originated from Algeria, in particular from Euphorb, and uh, this honey was collected from the southern Algeria. For the part of propolis, the authors extract propolis using olive oil. And for the treatment, the author chose to combine both uh, Saharian honey and propolis extract at different concentration. As a result, the treatment of uh, Saharan honey and propolis Saharan honey catheter with a polymicrobial biofilm reduces biofilm formation uh, 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 after treatment of two days. In this regard, we aim to determine the anti-biofilm activity of Algerian propolis extracts obtained by extraction of solvent in variant polarity. Propolis extracts were tested for their ability to inhibit biofilm formation and to reduce the performed biofilm on eight bacteria strain, including uh, strain of Staphylococcus aureus. And here we tested a uh, standard strain and three methicillin resistant strain. We tested all, also Enterococcus faecalis, uh, Micrococcus luteus, and Yersinia enterolytica standard strains. Uh, uh, the propolis uh, have been collected from different parts of uh, Algerian S, and we tested five propolis collected from uh, Ombudsbul, Taraf, Wedsept, Ain Al Hamara, and Ferjiwa. Before to start, all propolis has been frozen, and after we performed the extraction of our uh, bioactive compounds. During this uh, part, we uh, uh, choose uh, a solvent ratio one by 10. Why did we choose this ratio? Because in our previous investigation, we noticed, tested, and imp improved also that this ratio one by 10 of solvent lead to the extraction of uh, uh, the most uh, richest extracts in polyphenolic compounds and in flavonoid compounds. And those extracts have been tested for their uh, anti oxidants and antibacterial activity. And when we use a rastro 1 by 10, we obtain the most active extract in both activities, antioxidant and antibacterial activity. So we choose this ratio in this study, but here we uh, use four different extracts. Uh, uh, um, of varying polarity, we used uh, petroleum ether extract, chloroform extract, ethyl acetate extract, and methanol extract. For the bacteria, all the bacteria have been obtained from Bacteriology Laboratory uh, uh, in Pamukla University Biology Department. As I said before, we test eight bacteria strain, including uh, standard and reference strain of Staphylococcus aureus, uh, Yersinia enterolytica, Micrococcus luteus, and Enterococcus faecalis. 
Uh, here you can see some details concerning uh, the preparation of the inoculum, the preparation of the media and uh, all the technical uh, parts of our study. Propolis extracts were evaluated for their ability on biofilm forming ability of tested bacteria using the method described by Khwidi. The biofilm reduction was tested on a polystyrene plate using crystal violet assays. Propolis extract were dissolved in the MSO and uh, as a concentration range, we test our propolis in a concentration range between 50 and 300 microgram per milliliter. An equal amount of the MSO was also used as a control. The performance of biofilm before the addition of propolis extract is uh, assessed also. To complete biofilm formation, bacterial suspension was adjusted to uh, 0 0.5 McFarland turbidity, and then we inoculate our plate. To evaluate the potential effects of Algerian propolis uh, on biofilm reduction, all the studied extracts were then added to each well, and the plate have been incubated during one day, and then we performed the crystal diole assay. Uh, the cell assembling in the biofilm were also counted using ply canton uh, technique. And uh, light microscopic analysis was used to confirm the anti-biofilm activity of our extract. To compare the chemical composition of the most active propolis extract, uh, we used ultra performance liquid chromatography tandem mass spectrometry with electrospay ionization source in multiple reaction monitoring mode uh, as the method de described by Kivrak and collaborator. By the way, Professor Kivrak was one of our collaborators in this study. So we performed all our experiments in triplicates and uh, expressed our results as means plus or moins standard deviation. For statistical an analysis, we used SPSS software. The crystal viola method was used to determine the antibiofilm activity of 20 extracts of Algerian propolis collected from five different regions on eight bacterial strains. Uh, uh, our result indicates that among all the tested extracts, four have been uh, um, shown the most active extract. And those extracts are very different from propolis to another propolis. We noticed that bet petroleum ether of the first extract was the most active. Chlorof chloroform extract of the third propolis was the most active and ethyl acetate extract and methanol extract of the fifth propolis was the most active extract. Regarding the uh, uh, effects on bacteria, all the extracts exhibit the poorest eradicating capacity on Yersinia, on Torelitica, and here we can see that Algerian propolis, uh, or at least the propolis we tested, are not active on this strain. While all the tested strain exhibited the highest eradicating capacity on one of the methicillin resistant Staphylococcus aureus. And here we can see that the percentage of uh, eradication is very high. It varied from uh, 51 to 80. <coughs> It is interesting to note that ethyl acetate extract of propolis 5 seem to act in the same way on the standard strain of Staphylococcus aureus, two of the methicillin strain uh, or resistant methicillin resistant strain of Staphylococcus aureus and Micrococcus luteus. While for the other uh, uh, extract, the uh, activity seems to, to uh, vary uh, significantly according to the tested bacteria and also the geographical origin of uh, our propolis. Our results suggested that the antibiofilm activity of propolis extracts varied according to the tested bacteria strain. The updated antibiofilm results were confirmed by the Kantin and Giesma Steinen, and our results suggested that the antibiofilm activity of propolis varied according to the use of sol for solvent during maceration and also the geographical origin of the tested propolis. 
Here you can see the uh, content of uh, uh, only the four uh, active extractor, and we can clearly see that the difference were significant when we compare it uh, to the control, except for the uh, Yersinia enterolytica. And here we can also uh, deduce that uh, Algerian propolis, or at least the tested propolis, did not exhibit any activity on these uh, bacteria. Biofilm reduction of Algerian propolis extract was evaluated in a concentration ranging between 50 and 300 microgram per milliliter. We noticed that there was a relation between biofilm reduction and concentration of propolis extract. The capacity of propolis to inhibit biofilm formation increases with the increase of the used concentration or the used uh, concentration of propolis extract. The most important inhibition was observed with the petroleum of propolis one with the highest percentage of uh, methicillin, uh, uh, on methicillin resistance Staphylococcus aureus. Antibiofilm activity of propolis seemed to be uh, a dose dependent uh, effect. And our results are in agreement with the uh, previous reports on propolis antibiofilm activity. Here we choose uh, to make a, um, a, a figure only with the, the four most active extract. And we uh, put here the one of the standard strain of Staphylococcus aureus and the three resistant metacillino, uh, 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 three resistant metacillino uh, Staphylococcus aureus. Among all tested extracts, four extracts were selected based on their high level activity and the bioactive components of the mentioned extracts were investigated uh, uh, in order to compare their chemical composition and to determine the component responsible for biofilm eradication. Uh, we identify 26 compounds in our uh, different uh, extracts. And uh, here I want to mention that uh, the, uh, the chemical part was performed only on the four most active extract. And uh, we noticed that uh, the, those extracts are very, very rich in two main compounds, which are phenolic acids. They are very rich on caffeic and ferulic acids. The majority of the identified compounds are present in the four analyzed extracts. However, there are some variations. Pyragalol was not detected in ethyl acetate extracts and methanol extracts of propolis 5, while catechin galate and hesperidine were not detected in ethyl acetate um, of the same propolis. In another hand, chloroform extract of propolis 3 did not contain any traces of catechin galate. ANOVA of the data showed that the tested propolis and the used solvents have statistically significant effects on the chemical composition of propolis, in particular on the phenolic composition. Differences between the amount of detected and identified compounds was found to be significant in the four tested extracts. The main compounds detected and identified in propolis extracts of this study was found to be caffeic and ferulic acids. Ferulic acid has a higher amounts, uh, about four to six times higher than caffeic acids. The crystal diole method was used to determine the antibiofilm activity of 20 extracts of Algerian propolis collected from five different regions on eight bacterial strains. Our results indicated that the maximum inhibition of biofilm formation was obtained for both Staphylococcus aureus reference strain and methicillin resistance strains, especially those of uh, two of the tested strain. And you can see the most active strain in the slide. The results of this study are in accordance with previous reports on Algerian propolis. Many investigations on propolis antibiofilm activity were performed, and we compare our results with the uh, reported results in the literature. Uh, 
We found some research concerning anti-biofilm activity of other propolis over the world, and we found that uh, uh, Stan and collaborators tested uh, the effects of eight Romanian propolis symbol on uh, 11 Staphylococcus uh, uh, clinical strain, and the, uh, 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 the study demonstrated that all tested ethanol extract exhibited an anti-biofilm activity. They tested propolis inhibited the adherence of Staphylococcus strains to inherit uh, substrates and their secretion of soluble enzymatic factors. Another study have been performed on uh, propolis collected from Turkey, and this time the uh, uh, authors examined the influence of the solvent user maceration on the uh, biofilm formation. And the study demonstrated that ethyl acetate and ethanol extracts were found to be the most active on biofilm inhibition of Staphylococcus aureus standard strain. But this study tested the methicillin sensitive uh, Staphylococcus aureus, and all the tested the uh, uh, extract were uh, sensitive and inhibits the biofilm formation. Another study this time is uh, on, uh, back, uh, on uh, propolis collected from uh, Polonia, and the author demonstrated that the uh, tested ethanolic extract uh, acts against biofilm forming Staphylococcus epidermidis. The reduction of biofilm formation was found to be significantly affected by incubation time. In addition, this reduction was concentration dependent. Another study was performed on Chilean propolis, and Chilean propolis was uh, found to be active on Streptococcus mutans. And finally, Tunisian propolis has been uh, uh, studied, and the results demonstrated that the tested propolis possess an excellent biofilm activity on oral streptococci. As a conclusion, antibacterial activity was widely investigated, and in recent years, propolis was also detected for the uh, potential antibiofilm activity. Uh, it is interesting to know that, independent of the plant source uh, of propolis and the chemical composition and the variation in the chemical composition of propolis, a biological activity, in particular antimicrobial activity, has always been reported. This confirms the remarkable composition uh, and correlation between phenolic contents and antibiofilm activity. The bioactive compounds of propolis were investigated in order to compare their chemical composition and to determine the components responsible for biofilm eradication. The tested propolis extracts were rich in two phenolic acids, in particular caffeic and ferulic acids, which are considered as the major compounds in our study. The final results suggest that those compounds might be responsible for the observed antibiofilm activity. In addition, the tested extracts were most active on Staphylococcus aureus and methicillin resistant Staphylococcus aureus. Therefore, it is plausible to predict that extract with a high level of caffeic acid or ferulic acid, or both caffeic and ferulic acids, can possess or might possess a high antibiofilm activity against Staphylococci strains. Biofilm-related infections threaten human health and cause recurrent infections in the hospital. Therefore, the discovery of alternative drugs for curing biofilm infection in is an attractive area for research. Our results indicated that Algerian propolis extracts significantly affect pathogenic bacteria biofilm production at tested concentration, and they may or might have the potential for the treatment of related diseases to those bacteria. But further works are in need to uh, this work will help us to better understand the mechanism of action of antibiofilm activity of propolis, and uh, uh, it will help to uh, use uh, uh, propolis in a safer manner. And uh, finally, thank you for your attention. So thank you, Professor Narimar, for this excellent presentation. It's very interesting to have this co correlation between biomolecules from uh, uh, propolis 
and with geographical, botanical aspects of propolis, and to have this antibiotic film because uh, we have uh, uh, two strategies to kill bacteria or uh, to disturb uh, viru viru uh, virulic uh, genes and transcription genes in order to, uh, to make this uh, uh, disturbance of biofilm of bacteria. So it's very, very interesting as a strategy. Thank you very much. Thank you, dear professor. Thank you for your answers. So now we uh, need to go for the next uh, presentation. Yes. Yes. From uh, uh, Professor Veronica Lazar from Romania. The title of uh, presentation is Propolis, a node in the new medicine with antimicrobial, antibiofilm, and antipathogenic activity. So, Dr. Veronica, the floor is yours. Please activate your microphone, Professor Lazar, Veronica. Yes, you need to activate your microphone too. Huh. Must be somewhere. Oh, yeah, yeah, sorry. Now, now, now it works. Now it works. Sorry. So uh, let me. Let okay, me... now is. Now it's okay. Finally. Yes. I succeeded. Uh, hello to everybody. Good morning, once again. Uh, I want to appreciate very much the last presentation. Um, it is related of mine. Um, and I want also to, to mention, to, to note that, uh, to notice that uh, this effect of uh, MRSA strains of propolis, uh, it's uh, uh, quite important, very important. And uh, it has to be uh, mentioned. And uh, more studies uh, that are necessary to, to be sure about uh, this effect, and not only. Um, speaking about uh, my presentation, uh, I'm not sorry. I'm not very. Uh, you, uh, we don't use very much Zoom. We, uh, I'm very. Uh, usually, we use uh, Google Meet. Uh, okay. Sorry. Okay. So yeah, share screen. Okay. Yes. Okay. And then on the right, share screen, and then you select the PowerPoint. Yes. Okay. Do you see my presentation? Uh, not yet. Uh, not yet. Okay. W what we can do, Professor Lazar, we, we can present from our computer. We can put it from our computer. Yes, and then, please. And then, and then it just says, says next, next slide. Yeah? Okay, okay. Okay, this is better. It's easier. Sorry. No problem, no problem. It happens. Okay, let me check here. It's uh... okay. No, okay. So, um, as uh, Professor Segueni told us, uh, propolis is used from uh, ancient times, so it, it is a very old and uh, new medicine uh, in the same time with uh, demonstrated antimicrobial, antibiofilm and uh, antipathogenic activity. Next, please. Next, please. Um, I'll start my talk with uh, this graph, which is already, uh, probably it is already very known because it's from, uh, uh, 2014, uh, which uh, the experts in the antimicrobial resistance um, warned us about this very, um, 
this uh, estimated uh, value of antimicrobial resistance in uh, 2050, when uh, 10 million uh, millions of uh, deaths will be registered, uh, which is uh, much more than mortality by different form of cancers and other diseases. So uh, it is a very uh, alarming uh, effect uh, because uh, we are approaching to the post-antibiotic era. Next, please. Uh, my uh, topic uh, will be focused on uh, chronic infections which are often biofilm associated infections, which are very difficult to solve. Um, and uh, because uh, there are frequent therapeutic failure. Uh, due to the inefficiency of usual, usual doses of antibiotics, and uh, it is already described a new parameter uh, biofilm uh, minimum uh, eradication concentration. In this context, there are very necessary alternative or complementary solutions. And the actual, uh, actual trend is uh, the use of different combinations to treat uh, efficiently these uh, infections. Uh, so antibiotics plus uh, Worm sensing inhibitors of different origins. Uh, microbial, for instance, uh, there are very known probiotics used as cells, but also different uh, metabolites of probiotics, soluble factors, uh, including worm sensing inhibitors, can be very useful. Uh, these uh, substances are also from vegetal and animal origin and there is uh, there are also there is also this mixed uh, uh, product propolis or B glue which is uh, of course of mixed origin uh, vegetal and animal. Next, please. In recent years, following the general trend of using different drugs provided by nature. Plant and bee products have been investigated and promoted for a wide range of uh, harmless therapeutic applications. But it is very necessary to pass from ethnomedicine to scientific evidence. Uh, and in this purpose, in, uh, there are necessary more studies. In this context, interkingdom signaling, a relatively recent field of research, um, it is very promising for a new perspective uh, toward an uh, uh, intelligent strategy of uh, anti uh, to eradicate infections, to treat efficiently infections. Next, please. Next, please. Um, of course, there are. Uh, things already known, but I want to remember you, what is a biofilm? A community of adherent cells to a substratum embedded in a matrix secreted by themselves, uh, composed of uh, extracellular polymeric substances, proteins, uh, uh, extracellular uh, DNA, minerals, water, uh, and uh, which manifest a different phenotype concerning the growth rate and gene transcription. Um, a biofilm uh, represents a different growth phase, alternative to free or planktonic cells, and uh, it can be composed of, uh, can be mono or multi-species microbial community, in this case being called consortium. Next, please. What are the advantages of biofilm cells embedded in this uh, um, community? They are uh, protected, um, more efficient, uh, metabolic, uh, more efficient, and uh, they manifest uh, tolerance to uh, all kinds of antimicrobials. The adherence capacity and this growth mode in biofilms provides survival in a host 
by an increased recalcitrance to the host immune factors, being them uh, unspecific or specific to, um, and also tolerance to usual therapeutic doses of antibiotics calculated on uh, MIC basis. Even if the biofilm cells tested in suspension by the standard method could be susceptible to the uh, some antibiotics. Um, the MIC, so uh, determined, as you know very well, by the standard assay on free cells in suspension, is very different from minimal biofilm eradication concentration. Next, please. The values are very, very different. Uh, this uh, picture is uh, probably very known uh, because uh, it presents uh, a, the cycle process of biofilm formation in uh, different, uh, in many steps, uh, starting with the initial uh, attachment of cells to a substratum or contamination of substratum, uh, multiplication and colonization of substratum, biofilm development uh, and inflammatory host response, uh, spreading of uh, uh, cells and uh, of infection too. Um, and from these uh, mature uh, uh, biofilms, uh, finally aggregates of single cells can be uh, removed, detached, and uh, the cycle, uh, the process will be will start again. Um, this uh, last process of detachment of aggregates can be the cause of systemic infections, which is the effect very severe. Next, please. Uh, the mature biofilm is uh, uh, compared with the citadel or citadel-like uh, communities presenting, uh, as you already seen, uh, um, mushrooms, columns, and pillar-like uh, structures. But uh, more important, there are properties of this uh, community, uh, of the, um, which present uh, spatiotemporal synergistic relationships, uh, metabolic cooperation, which uh, is leading toward tolerance to all kinds of antimicrobials, survival, uh, which presents, which have survival value for bacteria, but with uh, bad consequences uh, in uh, medical field. Um, in these communities, the cells, uh, uh, it is already proved that uh, uh, over a critical uh, point of the cell density, cellular density, the will start the synthesis of virulence factors, uh, synchronizing their different genes expression in a cell density manner. Um, this density being signaled by a quorum sensing mechanism in accordance and in accordance and which step of the infectious process. Uh, so the, bio, the bacterial cells, microbial cells are able to regulate this uh, virulence gene expression uh, in accordance with the uh, step of the infection. The biofilm cells are metabolically more efficient and well protected and resistant to all stress conditions including all kinds of antimicrobials. Next, please. About uh, these uh, biofilms or uh, community, microbial communities are not, not very simple, uh, large populations of bacteria. It is proved that there is a process of uh, cellular, intercellular communication by quorum sensing mechanism mediated by small molecules or called also autoinducers. So there are uh, such uh, molecules with uh, uh, low molecular weight, which are uh, uh, produced by the cells 
and uh, which are present in uh, in cells uh, and uh, extracellularly. Uh, these autoinducers, uh, some of them are uh, specific for gram-positive bacteria, uh, which are uh, peptidic molecules, and others are uh, for gram-negative bacteria, um, acyl homoserine lactones, but there are also autoinducers type 2, which are common for uh, the both uh, group of uh, bacteria. Uh, these molecules, over a, over a critical point, of uh, their concentration uh, when they are accumulating not only in, uh, in the extracellular space, but also um, inside the cells, are, they are able to regulate the proteins, uh, are uh, able to regulate the gene expression and regulating many processes like conjugation, sporulation, motility, antibiotic production, uh, symbiosis, uh, biofilm formation even, but also virulence factor uh, expression. Uh, exopolysaccharides, uh, toxin, uh, siderophores, and uh, so on. Next, please. This process of adherence to a substratum and biofilm formation confer to microbial cells, bacterial microbial cells, resistance to host defense mechanisms. And specific, we are, we are speaking about mechanisms of clearance, uh, phagocytes, but also to specific uh, uh, defense mechanism, uh, such as uh, such are uh, antibodies. Uh, even they are. Uh, uh, a thousand times uh, tighter with very high, even in uh, uh, immunized, uh, immunized uh, persons. Um, biofilm formation confer resistance also to antimicrobial substances, including antibiotics, antiseptics, disinfectants, biocides generally. Uh, and the symptoms of these infections are uh, fever and therapeutic failure at usual doses of antibiotics calculated, as I said, on MIC basis, determined by standard uh, method on free cells. Uh, this uh, high resistance to antibiotics and other antimicrobials, it is uh, different, is non-inherited, is only phenotypical behavioral resistance and for uh, avoiding the confusion, it is called now tolerance. Next, please. So these biofilm-associated infections uh, are consecutive to biofilm development on cellular substrata and on uh, biomaterials uh, too, uh, which are very used in medicine now. And these biofilm-associated infections represent 80% um, total, of total infections. Uh, these infections are compared with a metastatic phenomenon um, concerning their capacity to disseminate in a host. The most important aspect of these challenges is the remarkably increased antibiotic non-inherited uh, resistance or tolerance of the uh, biofilm cells. The biofilm phenotype can reduce antimicrobial susceptibility um, and uh, increase this tolerance up to uh, 100,000 uh, and even more about uh, uh, up to different authors reducing um, antimicrobial efficiency and leading to, uh, leading to therapeutic failures. So the phenomenon of uh, antibioresistance in this way is amplified. Even since uh, uh, 2000, the CDC, uh, the Center for Disease Control and Prevention from United States cited biofilm-associated infectious diseases as one of the uh, seven major, uh, ma uh, major health concerns, um, which, uh, 
uh, are very important to uh, to solve this problem. Next, please. For their adaptation and success in a host, pathogens use uh, signaling pathways, uh, which are targets for a new generation of drugs. Because virulence uh, fact factors expression is dependent on quorum sensing mechanism, inhibition of these circuits uh, of uh, worm sensing mechanisms by natural worm sensing inhibitors uh, is uh, it's a way to to efficiently treat these infections and these uh, molecules of worm sensing inhibitors um, are considered to antipathogenic drugs because they are uh, regulating they are inhibiting the virulence gene expression, which is a very attractive alternative to antibiotherapy and in the same time, an ecological strategy for fighting chronic, uh, chronic and uh, biofilm associated infections. Uh, for the antivirulence molecules, addressing factors necessary for bacteria to avoid the immune system of the host immune system, uh, they could be used to treat or prevent uh, bacteria, uh, bacteriemia and the inhibition of the interaction with host immune defenses needs to be validated. Um, it is the opinion expressed by uh, uh, an expert uh, in uh, antibioresistance. Um, is K uh, in uh, 2010. These molecules of uh, quorum sensing inhibitors are secreted by all uh, organisms as anti infectious defense mechanisms. Uh, they are uh, of uh, vegetal origin, animal, honeybee products uh, are uh, of mixed origin and uh, microbial too. Next, please as I already said. So a potential alternative or complementary solution to antibiotics uh, is represented uh, also by uh, Propolis uh, with um, antimicrobial, uh, antiviral too, and other biological effects, as you know very well. This product is a building material and a protective agent in the beehive. It, is also, it, uh, it also plays an important role in honeybee social immunity. And it manifests, as I said, antibacterial, antifungal, antiviral too, even in, uh, during this pandemic, uh, this pandemic's uh, propolis, uh, uh, there are some reports about the antiviral uh, uh, effect of propolis. Uh, and many others, antioxidant, anti-inflammatory, immunomodulatory, and even anti-tumoral. Next, please. Um, the uh, chemical composition of pro, uh, propolis is very uh, complex, as you know very well, because you are specialist in this field. Uh, next, please. And uh, it is proved that more than uh, 300 compounds have been identified. Uh, there are a category of major ones, more than 50% uh, of uh, uh, all components. And there are also minor components. And together, they are manifesting uh, different effects. The most important fractions responsible for the biological activities of propolis are flavonoids and uh, various uh, phenolic and uh, aromatic compounds. Um, at the beginning of this uh, century, only relatively a few papers were published on uh, propolis antibiofilm um, uh, activity. Uh, and I... Uh, Mentioned here some examples. In 2003, Duarte et Alia reported that propolis inhibits the growth of oral microorganism and uh, the expression of bacteria derived glycosyl transferases 
responsible for glucan synthesis and uh, the basis for uh, pathogenic dental plaque formation. Uh, Bullman et al. reported that propolis contains compounds mediated by uh, N uh, acetyl uh, homoserine lactones in Pseudomonas aeruginosa PAO1, controlling the bacterial virulum. So the total the totality of virulence uh, factors expression. But uh, more recently, there are uh, more and more uh, studies about this subject. Uh, and I mentioned here some examples, Dogali et al., uh, Galetti et al., Bezera, uh, Santos Navarro, Perez et al. Uh, next, please. According to these results, these reported results, propolis has a broad spectrum, strong antibacterial activity against strains of gram-positive bacteria and gram-negative bacteria too. Some different varying results concerning the antimicrobial activity of ethanolic extracts of propolis can be due, there are reported and can be due uh, to seasonal variation of chemical composition of plants and propolis too to the extraction method and various methods for antimicrobial activity determination and uh, to experimental conditions in the same time. Thus, uh, many studies present correlative results explaining the antimicrobial uh, by the chemical composition of uh, uh, propolis. Um, for, examples, uh, for example, Salomao et al. reported that the active components of uh, European propolis are flavonoids, aromatic acid, and esters, while the Brazilian propolis are amirins. Um, Kozalek et al. showed the propolis samples with a higher content of flavonoids exerted an intense antimicrobial activity against strains of uh, common pathogens uh, such as Staphylococcus aureus, uh, Streptococcus pyogenes, Enterococcus fecalis, and even Candida albicans. Next, please. Uh, uh, st such studies were performed uh, even in our uh, department, uh, in our University of Bucharest, uh, by, uh, for example, by uh, one of my uh, former PhD students. Um, uh, there were uh, analyzed uh, different uh, samples of propolis from different regions of uh, Romania. Um, the propolis all, uh, was analyzed by uh, gas chromatography. Next, please. And uh, the propolis effect of uh, the ethanolic extracts was uh, uh, essayed by uh, uh, a method, uh, antibiogram ad adapted uh, antibiogram uh, method on uh, petri dishes. Um, the different uh, samples of propolis were uh, screened for their activity, and uh, it was proved the more important effect and more intense effect of gram positive uh, uh, bacteria. Uh, initially, we, there were always uh, used um, uh, reference strains, but uh, uh, after that, uh, only clinical uh, strains were used. Next, please. Um, it was tested the total uh, extract, propolis total extract, and uh, although also fractions of this, and uh, the effect was manifested against uh, microfungi, uh, different uh, strains of Candida albicans, as you can see here, and against the different uh, gram-positive bacteria. Uh, many strains of uh, reference and clinical strains of uh, uh, Staphylococcus uh, species. Next, please. The qualitative uh, uh, methods were uh, 
followed by quantitative antimicrobial activity of propolis extracts and uh, fractions. And um, uh, it was proved uh, this effect on uh, Candida albicans, a strain of Candida albicans, uh, measuring the absorbance of uh, the cultures exposed to different dilutions of uh, propolis. And uh, uh, also, uh, this antimicrobial activity uh, was demonstrated by uh, different uh, dilutions of uh, ethanolic extract of propolis uh, using uh, samples of propolis from different regions of uh, Romania. Next, please. It was uh, proved also the capacity of this ethanolic extract to inhibit the microbial adher uh, adherence at a cellular substratum using uh, 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 HELA uh, to line, HELA line cells. Uh, and uh, the index of adherence was uh, reduced by exposure to uh, ethanolic extracts of propolis. The, this effect was uh, um, calculated by uh, observations to microscopes, to light microscopy, by light mi microscopy. Next, please. Uh, it was also registered uh, said the uh, capacity of uh, Romanian propolis uh, samples from different zones of Romania. Um, and uh, it was calculated, uh, estimated, determined the minimum uh, biofilm uh, eradication concentration. As you can see, some samples of propolis presented uh, uh, this uh, effect uh, capacity to inhibit the biofilm formation and very low uh, concentration. Next, please. It was also tested the capacity of uh, different uh, samples of propolis to uh, present uh, synergistic activity together uh, with the uh, different antibiotics. It is uh, demonstrated this capacity, which is uh, very important to, uh, to notice this uh, synergistic effect of propolis, uh, because in this way, the bacterial strains can be converted from resistant to intermediary susceptible or even to susceptible strains which has, is very important because in this way, the strains can recover their susceptibility to uh, antibiotics. And these effects or, uh, was demonstrated for different uh, antibiotics, as you can see, uh, antibiotics uh, which can inhibit the process of proteosynthesis uh, or uh, antibiotics uh, such as uh, ciprofloxacin, which inhibit the DNA synthesis, uh, antibiotics uh, which are acting on uh, uh, cell, uh, bacterial cell all, or uh, even to uh, trimetoprim, which inhibit the folic uh, acid metabolism. Uh, there are effects very important uh, and uh, they must to be confirmed and uh, um, to, to make uh, more, um, uh, more studies in this way. Next, please. It was also determined the capacity of uh, the three propolis samples, ethanolic extracts, um, their capacity to inhibit the expression of different virulence factors, as you can see, um, virulence factors expressed by different uh, species and strains of uh, uh, Streptococcus. Um, and this capacity to inhibit uh, different soluble factor, factors 
you can see here uh, we haven't time to to analyze uh, uh, in details but uh, you can see this uh, uh, very important ability to uh, inhibit the uh, expression of lipases, uh, lecithinases, uh, hemolysins, uh, and other factors. Next, please. In conclusion, uh, the anti-infective uh, strategy um, is uh, based on natural products, represent a new and ecological approach with great therapeutical and preventive value in the biomedical field, and not only. Um, for the management, uh, efficient management of chronic infections due to multi-resistant and biofilm forming microorganisms. The fighting against these uh, biofilm associated infections needs a coordinated strategy based on combinations of antibiotics with natural antimicrobials and worm cell inhibitors, um, substances without selection uh, effect and dysbiosis effect. By this strategy can be avoided the amplification of antibioresistance phenomena, and at the same time, the eubiotic status uh, can be of normal microbiota can be maintained, and uh, which is very important for the health status of the host. For sol uh, solving the biofilm associated infections, there are necessary different methods to assay the antimicrobial susceptibility, different th therapeutic strategies, medical research, uh, and uh, clinical studies with the purpose to discover and assess efficient methods or uh, uh, combinations uh, or complementary uh, methods, which are ecological alternatives to antibiotics and propolis and uh, in this context, propolis and worm sizing inhibitors can be such alternatives with the advantage that these bioactive uh, compounds are not selection factors. Acting by interruption of this biofilm cells communication, worm sizing inhibitors can uh, restore the bacterial cell susceptibility to usual doses of antibiotics. Thank you for your attention. Thank you. So thank you, Professor Veronica Lazar, for this excellent presentation, because I will thank speak uh, on this uh, virulence uh, genes. So it's very, very interesting. Yes, very interesting data. Thank you. Congratulations. Thank you. Yes. OK. Thank you very much. Thank you, Professor Veronica. It was very informative and uh, we help us a lot to uh, understand many, many mechanisms uh, concerning uh, uh, propolis, uh, uh, antibiofilm and also uh, other antimicrobial. Thank you again for your uh, nice Thank and you. informative presentation. Thank you, Mito. Thank you. So uh, the next uh, speaker will be Professor Badia Liusi. And it's a great pleasure and honor for me to introduce Professor Badia, uh, because I met Professor Badia in 2007, and I was very, very young researcher. I was just an assistant professor, and uh, I talked with her twice, uh, one in Fez and one here in Constantin. And I hope that next time we will meet face to face. I uh, am enjoying this uh, this moment from this this time. So uh, our next speaker is uh, Professor Badia Liusi, and Professor Badia will talk about the uh, impact of biohybrid magnetic nanoparticle and Moroccan propolis on adherence of methicillin resistant strains of Staphylococcus aureus application fields. Uh, the floor is yours, Professor Badia. Thank you, Professor Nariman, for this uh, nice word. And I will be very happy uh, to, to meet uh, in presential. So I will uh, share my screen. To the participants. Okay. 
Hayır. Yes. Is it okay? Yes, it's okay. Okay, so it's my great pleasure to participate in this uh, nice conference. And I will talk on impact of uh, bio-hybrid magnetic nanoparticles of Moroccan propolis on adherence of methicillin resistant strain of Staphylococcus aureus application field. Uh, so for the history uh, we have in our current that uh, honey as remedy and we have many books uh, like Canon Fitab, uh, uh, which gives a cocktail of health from herbs, from uh, uh, and primary law of healing, let the food be the medicine. Uh, we have this modern apitherapy, which is based on scientific and uh, all uh, behave products have medicinal use, honey, pollen, beef products, propolis, royal jelly, wax, pilarnin, pilarva, apier, the uh, microbial activities. But you have quality products like consistent chemical composition, standardized biological activity of contaminating chemicals, of contaminating microbes, and traceability of compounds in order to, to make a good study with good traceability. So uh, I, I, will, I will talk on propolis, but uh, uh, your title it is Api Pharmacopoly. So uh, I will start some slides with uh, some products like honey. And I have published uh, uh, this article uh, on applied science, the activity of more than honey and the influence of its physicochemical parameters using geometric tools. So it had uh, uh, this uh, Zendaz, it's uh, from Bureau Spinosum. It is a very uh, uh, good honey origin. And we have published many publications with anti-proliferative anti uh, effect. Uh, we have here uh, the, the components of this uh, honey, polyphenols. We have methyl syringate, like with the uh, Manuka honey. And we have a very good uh, MEC uh, effect with Escherichia coli, Pseudomonas, and Staphylococcus aureus. And when we analyze this uh, uh, component uh, analysis, you have a very uh, high uh, uh, data with uh, methylsyringate has bactericidal properties against several bacterial stains that are resistant to antibiotics. And with this multivarial uh, uh, analysis, indicates that melanoloids, acidity, uh, phenolic compounds, exhaust, and divalent, uh, divalent mineral at all the physicochemical compounds which are correlated with this antibacterial activity. So it is very interesting to make a correlation with biomolecules and which biomolecules are uh, effective for uh, this effect. And when you compare MEC from Escherichia coli, uh, Pseudomonas, and uh, Staphylococcus, we have a very good effect uh, of uh, this honey, but not all the honey. We have only uh, Zendas 1, uh, 2, 3, and for uh, 10 and 9, it is not a very, very good antibacterial effect. So it is a, a very good uh, tool uh, to make this chemometric tool to compare with this uh, analysis. We have also another uh, type as arrow honey. Arrow honey is essential oils with honey. And when uh, we, we have this uh, uh, composition of honey, syringic acid, vanillic acid, caffeic acid, some uh, phenolic compounds. With essential oils, we have carvacol, timol, and cineol. And this notion of our, uh, honey 
uh, it's very interesting with this cocktail and synergistic effect with essential oils. And when we look at this uh, effect of honey antibacterial effect within using oregano vulgar essential oils, we have a very good effect that honey rich in uh, tannic, ferulic acid, uh, gallic acid, galat epicatechin are uh, very uh, correlated with antibacterial effect. But we have only uh, for total synergy only 4% and partial additive effect only 40%, no interaction uh, five, uh, 52%, no effect 4%. So you should make this cocktail of mixture in order to have which adequate uh, report will be uh, interesting in which uh, with the essential ones. Another example is the antioxidant and antibacterial effects of pollen uh, extract on human multidrug resistant pathogenic bacteria. We have Acinobacter, Staphylococcus, Enterobacter, uh, Klebsia pneumonia, Escherichia coli, Pseudomonas aeruginea. And we find that uh, the, 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 the excellent effect is with uh, Punica granatum. Quercus elix, but the, 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 low, uh, the very moderate effect is uh, with uh, uh, citrus orangeum. Another effect is also be bred as promising source of bioactive molecules and also for antibacterial effect. And this antibacterial effect is dominated by uh, disturbance of uh, uh, cell membrane, uh, alteration of uh, uh, of potential membrane, and we should have this uh, correlation uh, between phenolic acid, flavonoid, organic acid, and uh, the effect uh, on antibacterial uh, impact. And when we see effect on antibacterial activity of bibred and compare it with the uh, antibiotics and antifungal activity, we have a very good effect uh, for a serious and for, uh, uh, for monocytogenes. We have 0 0.04 and 0 0.1 uh, milligram by milliliter. And also for antifungal activity, we have a very good effect uh, with uh, uh, difference with concentration 0 0.35 and 1 milligram by milliliter. So now let's go to propolis. Propolis is the external immune system of the bee. It's used for detoxification of heavy metals and protect against toxicity of environmental toxin and protect cells. Uh, so we have uh, the effects of propolis. Propolis kills bacteria, also have a very good effect boosting immunity, uh, protect liver, antioxidant effect, anti-inflammatory and uh, also against free radical uh, scavenging activities. activities. Uh, we have this review on insights of propolis from Mediterranean countries with the chemical composition, biological activities. And uh, when you compare uh, this uh, chemical composition of propolis from Mediterranean uh, countries, we have uh, uh, volatile and non volatile fraction, non volatile fraction, phenolic acid, phenolic acid ester, flavonoids, diterpenes. And we have uh, this uh, no volat volatile like benzoic acid, benzoic acid ester, monoterpen, cisterpen, uh, which uh, are dominant, this diterpen in uh, Morocco, Egypt, uh, Libya, Algeria, Turkey, and Italy. And this exploration of therapeutic uh, property of modern propolis, like anti diabetics, anti inflammatory. Uh, as radical scavenging activities and antibacterial and also antibiofilm activity. So the principal biologic properties of propolis, including this, uh, uh, these properties as anti-inflammatory, antioxidant, antimicrobial. We have antioxidants, it's correlated with antimicrobial, like for uh, the last uh, presentation. Oxidative stress is believed to be responsible for the occurrence of diseases such as diabetes, cancer, inflammation, cardiovascular diseases. And we have uh, antimicrobial, like active on uh, gram-positive bacteria and less effective regarding gram-negative bacteria and yes. Regardless, the diversity of the chemical profile of propolis, generally all of them present antimicrobial activity. And here we have this um, antibacterial activity of propolis samples. Uh, we have MEC and MBC and uh, inhibitory uh, diameter. 
euh, euh, against Escherichia coli, Staphylococcus aureus, plus de menaces, and Streptococcus, and we have uh, different uh, activity, uh, like uh, very interesting activity with pituri, with the uh, piset, and with uh, and uh, with uh, P50. And when you compare uh, this histogram of canonical discrimination, considering the, contacts, the contents of wax phenolic contents, we have this height wax resin is correlated with uh, less antibacterial effect, but height phenolic uh, compound content is very correlated with antibacterial effect against these stains. And we have these articles on uh, two, uh, 2000, uh, 21, influence of geographic origin and plant source on physical chemical properties and antioxidant antibacterial activity of propolis. We have also this uh, article in molecules, uh, it's uh, recent, determination of phenolic compounds in various propolis samples collected from an African and an Asian region and their impact on antioxidant and antibacterial activity. So we make a cocktail of this Asian and African uh, propolis, and we have a very interesting antibacterial uh, activities. So let's now go to the, this uh, insertion of prosthetic medical device for different exploratory and therapeutic lipoprosis uh, under uh, pathological condition is a, a great risk factor for the occurrence of chronic infection in developing countries and being characterized by slow and C middle day intensity symptom, a chronic evolution and resistance to antibiotic. And we have recent public announcements that 60 to 90% uh, of all microbial infection involve biofilm developed on natural intact or damaged tissue or artificial devices like central venous catheter, peritoneal urinary catheters, dental material, cardiac valves, and other implants. One of the most significant clinical aspect is the fact that bacterial biofilm cause chronic infection because the disloc increase tolerance to antibiotics and disinfectant, as well as resisting phagocytosis and other components of the body defense system. And here we have uh, the, the free swimming bacteria, absorption in the substratum, production of polysaccharide, and maturation of biofilm. And we have this uh, installation of antimicrobial resistance. In this context, uh, we have the most uh, efficient strategy is to interfere with bacterial adherence, the first step in the biofilm formation by direct blocka blockage of surface receptors of using a non-specific strategy, usually involving compounds with anti-adherence properties. So the antibacterial properties of propolis, we have two strategies. By affecting bacterial growth, bactericidal and bacteriostatic effect, or not affecting bacterial growth, compounds that affect bacterial virulence, anti-corum sensing, compounds that affect the bacterial lifestyle, anti-biofilm effects. And when you look at these antibacterial properties of, property, uh, of propolis, which are correlated with flavonoids, uh, phenolic compounds, and aromatic acids, and we could make, uh, like, like for the presentation of Professor Nariman, we could make uh, extraction in water, methanol, ethanol, chloroform, dichloromethane, ethane, acetone, in order to, to make which compounds will be uh, elucidated and will be involved in this uh, antibiofilm uh, impact. And we have this uh, property of propolis, antipathogenic activity by inhibition of an acyl homocerylactone mediated signaling in bacteria. And we have a very good effect that propolis suppress this quorum sensing response. And when you look at this propolis, uh, we have variation of antagonist uh, of propolis to make uh, inhibition of this virulence, virulence gene. And uh, bacteria can communicate with uh, members of their own species and order to coordinate their behavior in response to cell density. Low cell density, you don't have quorum sensing dependent gene expression, but when we have high cell uh, density, quorum sensing dependent gene expression is involved. And here, propolis could block this virulence biofilm dynamics. And uh, propolis. Uh, 
uh, there are some evidence that uh, it propolis is able to make uh, equivalent signal that can detect by bacterial communication system in some cases can interfere with the formation of biofilm. The flavonol uh, naringenin reduces the, uh, the production of virulence factor controlled by uh, quorum sensing mechanism in Pseudomonas aerogenism. And we have uh, this example of propolis from Morocco. We have all, we, we compare with naranjin, with DMSO, and uh, we have not effects on growth uh, and on gene transcription of uh, Pseudomonas aerogenism. But we have also no effect of last uh, system in, uh, in, in the, this uh, signal of transduction. But uh, when you look at uh, this uh, pathway PQS system, we have a reduction with the P7, uh, P7 uh, propolis uh, extract. So it gives a very good effect. Also, uh, P7 uh, samples reduce biofuel production in pseudomonas aerogenism, and it, it affects biofilm life cycle maturation as a concentration of 250 micrograms by milliliters. And when we compare propolis uh, uh, with uh, topramycin antibiotics, we have uh, propolis improves top, topramycin penetration in pseudomonas aerogenism biofilm. And when we apply uh, topramycin with propolis, we have disturbance of this biofilm. So uh, for propolis, is there a potential for the development of new and efficient antimicrobial agents? Propolis plays a key role in the prevention and control uh, bacterial invasion. Propolis has an inhibitory effect on the expression of virulence genes of some pathogenic bacteria without affecting bacterial growth. Propolis also affects the production of biofilm, and this alteration uh, make uh, a modification of ar 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 architecture of, uh, of this uh, biofilm and increase the accessibility to antibiotics in encapsulated bacteria in the extracellular matrix. Also in this study, we analyzed several propolis samples of Morocco, and we have uh, found that uh, propolis that uh, propolis uh, flavonoids pinocombrin is a potential active principle that disturbs ahl dependent quorum sensing in bacteria. There are indications that additional flavonoids are important for propolis constitution in this respect. It is obvious that propolis deserves further studies as promising source of compounds and compounds mixture in the search of new approaches for antipathogenic treatment of bacterial pathogens based on natural products. And here we have another uh, interesting study with Moroccan propolis as natural antioxidant, antibacterial, and antibiofilm against Staphylococcus aureus. Uh, we have uh, this effect uh, of uh, Moroccan propolis. Uh, we make antimicrobial activities and uh, also we, we, we make. Uh, the phytochemical analysis of uh, propolis with antioxidant activity like uh, ORAC activity, gelatin activity, the PPH, APTS, molybdat, ENO, and uh, hydrogen peroxide. And we make some correlation of this effect. So uh, we have a very good effect with, uh, with antibiotics, uh, chloramphenicol, and when you compare uh, the MEC4. Uh, Staphylococcus aureus with samples one. Samples one is very rich in, in, in flavonoids and in uh, active compounds, and it gives a very good antibacterial uh, uh, effect as a concentration 0 0.73 milligram per milliliter and also 0 0.98 milligram per milliliter compared to chloramphenicol. And we have a very good effect and a different effect uh, when you look at this MEC uh, with uh, MRSA uh, 2, MRSA uh, 16, and also Staphylococcus aureus, uh, which originated from American type culture uh, collection. And when you compare this with uh, this antioxidant effect, you have a very good correlation between uh, uh, antioxidant properties like ORAC, DPPH, molybdat, and antibacterial activities, which correlated with uh, phenolic compounds. 
uh, this influence on adherence is uh, interesting because it uh, give us impact of propolis extract at the MEC value, 0 0.36 milligram per milliliter on the adherence ability of four Staphylococcus aureus strain. And we have a very uh, a good effect with a propolis against uh, MRSA2, MRSA16, uh, and uh, 19, uh, 16, and we compare with chlorhexidine, and the effect of propolis is uh, very, inter, uh, very uh, significant on the, the inhibition of adherence of, uh, uh, of, uh, of, uh, of uh, these strains. And when we compare the anti quorum sensing activity of propolis against bacterial quorum sensing by violacin production by chloromo. Uh, bacterium violacicin, we have a loss of, uh, uh, of pigment in this, uh, that indicates that inhibition of quorum sensing by propolis extract, and we have a very good effect uh, when we compare uh, this uh, height inhibition zone observed with uh, very high concentration of propolis, like in the zone of H, we have a very good uh, inhibition area when you compare, uh, and uh, we have a loss of this uh, uh, this, uh, this pigmentation when you don't uh, use uh, propolis. So Moroccan propolis simply reveal the difference in antioxidant activity, which uh, could be attributed to the bioactive compounds in each propolis samples. The efficiency of one of the most active uh, samples as antibacterial against Staphylococcus aureus strains. Propolis did not induce the development of resistance to antibiotics, inhibited the biofilm formation, possessed anti-quorum sensing, and diminished the virulence of Staphylococcus aureus for all tested strains. And this finding is very interesting because it presents an important source of exogenous uh, compounds with antioxidant and antibacterial capacity that can uh, block uh, this effect and uh, give uh, anti-quorum sensing virulence. Uh, different types of nanoparticles have been reported as possessing antimicrobial and antibiofilm properties, particularly those containing heavy metals, iron oxide magnetic nanoparticles, which are provided by FDA for biomedical uses because they occur naturally in the liver, spleen, and human heart. Consequently, they will be non toxic and biocompatible at physiological level. In addition, the production of these nanoparticles is not difficult and they are chemically stable under physiological condition. They are also easily functionalized. Functionalized iron oxide magnetic nanoparticles, such as magnetic nanoparticles, uh, gives a very good effect for inhibiting microbial growth in the biofilm formation of yeast, candida albinos, uh, candida tropicalis, candida crisi, candida glabrata, and uh, uh, saccharomyces cerevisis, and bacteria Escherichia coli, Staphylococcus aureus, Staphylococcus aureus, Pseudomonas aerogena, and uh, Ondo, uh, Enterococcus physicus. Uh, so we, we, we make this. Uh, nanoparticles in order to make uh, anti-adherence properties. And for this uh, biocompatibility, we make this uh, uh, nanoparticle with, with, uh, with iron, and uh, they have very biomedical uh, effect uh, for magnetic resonance imaging, hyperthermia, biomedical separation, inhibition of biofilm development, and drug delivery or targeting. Uh, so for the fabrication of these uh, nanoparticles, we have uh, 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 magnetic nanoparticles produced by three methods, hydrothermal and co-precipitation, uh, functionalized with oleic, uh, oleic acid, which uh, prevent the adherence of MRSA strains on cathetins and impair the formation of biofilm. We make the chemical composition of uh, propolis by GCMS and the, the, the nanostructure by uh, X rayon, by uh, microscope and by FTIR. And uh, we have uh, making this uh, synthesis of nanoparticles by co-precipitation reaction. And you have the method of fabrication of nano, this nanoparticle. I don't give to the detail. If you want, I give you the, the article. And we have synthesis of hybrid core, which uh, make cathetic with uh, bacterial adherence. And here we, we make the 
the, the magnetic with the X-ray diffraction, and we have the, the experimental and the magnetic pattern, the same profile, the same pattern. Do have the size distribution of magnetic nanoparticle synthesis in this study, uh, and the size is uh, nine nanometer. And we make this uh, uh, impact on uh, nanoparticle on propolis and eugenol evaluated on the adherence of Staphylococcus aureus and mesethyl resistance aureus strain on catheter pieces. So we have original and we have some clinical uh, resistance. Uh, so when you look uh, in the dynamic of viable cells on the surface of catheter device, we, we have catheter with uh, 77%, but with eugenol and propolis, we have a very good effect on inhibition of uh, adherence to uh, viable cells with this MRSA2. And uh, when you, we have the, the culture, we have ma magnetite uh, with nanoparticle only, but we have with eugenol, we have a very good uh, effect inhibition of VL cells and adherence to catheter compared to propolis and eugenol 1%. With MRSA, uh, uh, this uh, strain, we have a very good effect with eugenol uh, 5% and propolis, not with eugenol 1%. And when you look there, we have a very good loss of, uh, of uh, this uh, adherence cells. So the capacity of this uh, functional to prevent the adherence uh, to catheter is uh, very interesting. And uh, we have uh, this effect uh, of functionalism with Moroccan propolis or eugenol compared with com uh, controls provided by the significant reduction of viable cell number in the presence of uh, protective pellicle of the hybrid nano system. Uh, so this uh, result is very interesting because we, we show that all the strains are have uh, anti adherence effect uh, with when you combine uh, magnetite with propolis and with eugenol. We have also this uh, particles with uh, this strain, and here we have uh, the same effect. We make the uh, the, the nano uh, structure of nanoparticle, and we have the, the characterization. And also, we have a very good effect when you compare uh, propolis with the uh, with, uh, antibiotics. We have the same magnetic patterns and the uh, characterization of these uh, nanoparticles and uh, uh, disturb disturbance of biofilm. And uh, when you compare this with uh, oleic acid and propolis, we have a very good uh, uh, anti uh, adherence effect with propolis and with oleic acid. And I, I fin finish with uh, these uh, articles of uh, uh, nanoparticles with propolis in resistant strain on Philococcus aureus. And here we have the de determination of minimum inhibitory concentration. And we see that propolis have a very good effect compared also with uh, 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 antibiotic chloramphenicol. And we have the uh, benzoic acid, methyl syringate. We have flavonoids, spinocombrin. And we have the structure of nanomaterials. Very interesting because when we give uh, this propolis, we make a disturbance of cell wall. Uh, and we have uh, compared with with control, we have all these disturbance which give a very good anti-biofilm effect. So the importance of nanoparticle as drug delivery system is optimized uh, by biological properties in the fact that they are taken by the cells more easily than larger molecules. So they can be successively used as delivery tools for currently available bioactive compounds. Uh, nanoparticles combined with propolis extract and antibiotic chloramphenicol exhibit antibacterial activity against different strain or use uh, uh, staphylococcus or use strain. The action of propolis nanocomposite target uh, the bacterial cell wall, evidencing their uh, distribution and protrusion formation. So the, the, this, uh, this result have an important benefit to, uh, due to its uh, antibacterial properties and also to, to minimize this, uh, this complication. And we have to, uh, uh, to make uh, this uh, mixture of antibiotics and uh, biomolecules for, for, uh, for uh, uh, propolis, and uh, you should make uh, uh, antioxidant 
effects and also uh, alternative uh, strategies like for nanotechnology in order to uh, combat the formation of biofilm in catheters by MRSA strain. This axis of research is very high importance and future research are imposed for isolation and identification of the bioactive components responsible for this activity of Moroccan propolis, as well as determination of inner mechanism of action. I would like to thank my collaborators from Portugal, Professor Maria Miguel, uh, Christina Diaz, uh, Faliro, Professor Jaziri from Belgium, and uh, PhD student to, to Sumaya Tuzani, Sukain El Gandus, and Mervin Bakor. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you, Professor Badia. It was a very, very interesting presentation. And uh, I think uh, that your work will be the uh, basis uh, for the uh, other coming uh, uh, research because uh, uh, you start to elucidate the mechanism of action of propolis. And also it's very interesting because we, uh, you combine propolis and other natural, natural products such as uh, uh, essential oil. And I think that uh, we can have a better uh, activity when we combine the product and other natural products uh, like, uh, like uh, essential oil or other, uh, other uh, uh, maybe medicinal plants. Uh, thank you. Thank you again, Professor Badia. It's uh, really uh, um, a great pleasure for us to listen to uh, your speech each time. Uh, and I wish uh, that you will continue, continue to contribute to our, our future events, inshallah. Thank you, Nariman. Excuse me, because I, I have a, a meeting in uh, our university. I don't have time uh, to organize the purpose because on Monday, uh, I, there is a, a ceremony, ceremony for me as I had been selected as emerit professor in the university. MashaAllah, MashaAllah. Congratulations. So on Monday, uh, they make a celebration of this. I am not in a retreat, but they make this in order to, uh, to have many projects and uh, to contribute to the uh, the, 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 uh, to the prosperity of the university and to, to conduct many projects with all you are our collaborators. Thank you very much. Thank you. Inshallah, inshallah. I'm very happy for you, dear professor. Uh, you. Uh, for me, you are a very great example to follow. Et j'espère qu'un jour je pourrai faire yeah. ne serait-ce qu'un tout petit peu pour no, no. la thérapie en Algérie. Comme you, will make, you will make more than me, I'm sure. You are very uh, strong, mashallah. Very strong. <laughs> thank, thank you. Thank you, dear professor. Thank you. So good luck for the ceremony and congratulations again. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So let's move to the next speaker. And our next speaker is. Uh, Professor Ardo Sabir from Indonesia. Uh, Professor Ardo Sabir, are you here? Yeah, yes, yes. Yes, yes, yes. So Professor Ardo Sabir will present a, a talk entitled In Vitro Effect of Ethanolic Extract of Propolis on the Ground of Enterococcus Fecalis. The floor is, your, is yours, Professor Ardo. OK, thank you very much, uh, Dr. Marimane. Uh, Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, I'm very happy can uh, present in here the conference. Uh, allow me to thank you for Dr. Stephen to uh, help me to share my uh, four points, of my slides. Okay. Uh, this uh, this time I want to present the my uh, research with title in vitro effect of ethanol, ethanolic extract of propolis toward the growth of uh, enterococcus fecalis. Yes, next, please. Next, okay. As introduction, uh, you know that the bacteria uh, is the main cause, uh, the, the cure of the uh, pulpa inflammation and also uh, later the perapicalation in uh, teeth. So uh, the, through the uh, dental carriers or maybe heterogenic, uh, heterogenic, uh, heterogenic and, and also uh, uh, fractures of teeth. So uh, if the, the, the dental pulp uh, has inflammation or necrosis, uh, 
we uh, must do the endodontic treatment to to uh, to uh, keep the teeth uh, not extracted so uh, we can uh, keep the teeth uh, in the uh, our uh, our our uh, mouth uh, but sometimes uh, this uh, the cure the failure of endodontic treatment because there is the uh, bacteria resistant uh, to the uh, biomechanical uh, preparation and also the medicament uh, uh, root canals. Uh, one of them, uh, but of one of the, the bacteria is the endorocus fecalis. Okay, next. Okay, why the endorocus fecalis uh, cause the failure of endodontic uh, treatment. So we must do the retreatment because the uh, this bacteria have the virulence factors, have several vir uh, virulence factors. Uh, they are, uh, this bacteria has a lytic enzyme, uh, cytolysine, hormones, aggregation substance, and lipotoic acid. Uh, they also inhibit host response suppress uh, lymphocyte cells, has uh, broad genetic polymorphism, and they can use uh, serum as the uh, nutri nutrition source, and also they can forming a biofilm. Okay, next. Next, please, Dr. Seven. Okay. Uh, as we know, as the propolis has been used uh, in dentistry field in many uh, to treat many uh, dental disease in uh, conservative dentistry, uh, periodontology, oral surgery and oral medicine and uh, others uh, field in dentistry. Uh, in conservative dentistry, uh, superpolis has been used to suppress dental pulp inflammation. Uh, uh, stimulate the collagen fibers in dental pulp, uh, prevent dental caries, uh, in treat uh, to treat gangrene uh, teeth, uh, can stimulate reparative dentin and also uh, increase enamel uh, mineralization. Okay, next, please. Okay, so the aim of this study is want to know the effect. Uh, or the effect of propolis uh, as antimicrobial agent uh, to toward the growth of the enterococcus fecalis bacteria. Okay, next. This is the first step of this the research. Uh, we get uh, we got. Uh, Propolis from the Lu, uh, East Lu uh, residence in South Sulawesi, and we uh, and the ethanol, uh, ninety five percent, and maceration for uh, five days, and then we filter it, and we get uh, two uh, substance, residual substance, and active substance, and we evaporated the active substance to get the ethanolic extract of propolis. Yes, next, Dr. Stephen. Okay, this is the second uh, step of the study where uh, the material test is in the study is uh, aquades as the negative control solution. Uh, and then the ethanolic extract of propolis, uh, we made uh, five concentration in this study, 1%, 2%, 3%, 4%, and 5%. And we also use 5.20% uh, in our cell as the solution, as the positive control. This is solution uh, commonly used by dentists uh, as the irrigant uh, solution after the uh, 
biomechanical preparation using the rotary instrument or uh, manual instrument. And then uh, we uh, add in uh, neutron board uh, medium where the, uh, there is uh, intercross fecalis incubated for 24 hours and uh, 37 degrees Celsius. And uh, we can uh, get the minimum inhibition concentration. And then we uh, add the blood agar medium uh, in stainless steel cylinder and uh, incubated again for 24 and 48 hours. And then we uh, measure uh, the diameter of inhibition zone at 20 after 24 hours and 48 per, uh, hours. Okay, next. This, uh, is, uh, this is the raw propolis we use, and this is uh, in figure B and the ethanol extract of propolis. Okay, next. Yes, this is the result of uh, the antibacterial activity of Extract, ethanol extract of propolis uh, on Anthropos fecalis. Uh, figure in the left is the uh, after 24 hours incubated, and the right is uh, after 48 incubated. Okay, next. Okay, this is the mean and the standard deviation inhibition uh, zone diameter of inhibition of its group after incubated for 24 and 80, uh, 48 uh, hours. We can see here that the 5% EP uh, show the largest diameter inhibition shown after uh, both 24 hours and 48 hours in 3.56 millimeters and 4.3 Three, uh, uh, 4.33 uh, millimeters. And uh, we can see that the, the increase of the concentration of EP, the, uh, uh, the diameter of in, uh, inhibition zone also uh, increase. Uh, okay, uh, next. This is the one way ANOVA test result among ACODES, uh, EP groups, and also 5.20% uh, NR cell after 24 hours incubated and uh, after 48 uh, hours incubated. There is the significant difference. So we continue with, use, with using the least significant difference test. Next, please. Yes, this is the result of uh, LSD test. Uh, we can look here that the, the only the uh, only the only significant difference between Aquades and all the ethanolic uh, extra uh, concentration and also an uh, uh, solution, but the uh, between the Tonal extra of propolis is not uh, is not a significant difference statistically. Also, also a bit, uh, among the tonal extra propolis concentration and uh, an also uh, solution. Okay, next. This is the result of two-way ANOVA. Uh, we want to know the there whether the uh, interaction between the time of incubation, incubation and concentration of EP, there is uh, no significant difference. Uh, 0 0.884 here, the uh, between period periods time and concentration. Uh, okay, next, please. The okay, discussion, you know that the endospecialis is considered as a persistent endodontic pathogen. This bacteria is the gram-positive facultative anaerobes, 
and able to penetrate uh, deep into the dental uh, dentinal tubulus and it's difficult to eliminate after biomechanical treatment in endodontic therefore to control and elim eliminate the this bacteria still a challenge uh, to dentists for uh, get the success of endodontic treatment uh, we know that the propolis is the resinous product uh, containing secretion from B and plants resin. Its composition, chemical composition, depends on the regional climate, flora, and time of year in the, uh, which it is collected. Next. The biological activity of propolis are mainly related to the presence of phenol and uh, polyphenol which are aromatic substance derived flavones, flavonoids, flavonols, and are active against the bacterial uh, cell wall. All uh, in this study, uh, we uh, can see that the all uh, extra ethanol propolis concentration, which is uh, show antibacterial activity against central specalis, where the more increased its concentration, the diameter of inhibition zone also more larger. We can see in table one, and although this result was not a significant difference statistically, interestingly, that even the lowest EP concentration, uh, uh, 1%, show larger diameter of inhibition zone than uh, positive control is, uh, is 5 point 20% in OCL. Uh, and OCL is the most common uh, irrigant uh, used by dentists in endodontic treatment. Okay, next. This is a fact that the propolis exhibit uh, significant antibacterial activity against the more resistant, gram-positive, facultative, and strictly anaerobic uh, species bacteria. The mechanism of propolis to inhibit the growth of enterospirus is not fully understood. But study by Takeshi, Kikuni, and uh, Slider, this is a study is very uh, long, long time ago, found that the propolis can cure this organization the organization of cytoplasmic uh, membrane cells, partial bacteriolysis, and inhibit protein synthesis. Uh, alternatively, uh, study by Ben Hopi at all and Marusi uh, also uh, found that the antibacterial effect of propolis due to the synergism of several active substances in propolis, such as propolonides, ester exit, trilulic exit, cinnamic exit and uh, traffic exit phenyl phenyl uh, ester okay next please. as conclusion uh, we can conclude that the after incubated for 24 and 48 hours all uh, extra ethanolic extract of propolis concentration in this study could inhibit enterophosphatase growth in vitro therefore uh, EP has potential to be used as an alternative irrigant solution in endodontic treatment. Okay, uh, thank you very much. Okay, next please, Dr. Seven. Okay, next please. This is my university. Okay, next. This is my city, Makassar, in South Sulawesi, Indonesia. Okay, next. Okay. I think that's all for me to uh, my presentation. Thank you very much. Thank you for Dr. Stephen too. <coughs> Thank you, Professor Ardo Sabir, for this uh, informative presentation, in particular on the, the potential use of propolis on the dentistry and uh, on the, uh, the growth of Enterococcus fecalis. Uh, I think we are in need in more uh, work on uh, propolis and on history because I think there is a lack of uh, research on uh, this part and uh, it's uh, very important to have a, 
uh, a good uh, buccal hygiene to, to because it's very uh, important for us and uh, i think that propolis uh, might be a, a, a very good approach in this uh, in this field of research thank you again thank you. professor thank, thank you dr marino Uh, so our next speaker will be Professor Sevji Kolaili. Professor Sevji, are you here? Yes, here. Ah, I'm here. Okay. So uh, I will Everybody. give a short introduction on Professor Sevji. Professor Sevji is the Sevji. Sevgi. Ah, Sevgi. Sorry. Yes. Professor Sevgi, Sevgi. is a, a biomedical uh, bio, uh, is a medicinal biochemist in Black Sea University in Trabzon, Turkey. She is studying about uh, bee product analysis and uh, bioactive properties. Uh, and uh, uh, until today, she has more than 100 articles and 4,500 citations. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, I worked on collaboration with two of uh, the team of Professor Sevji, uh, Dr. Uh, Merve Keskin and uh, Dr. Chavan Keskin, and we have uh, a good uh, uh, publication on the uh, comparison between uh, uh, antibacterial and antioxidant activity of Algerian and uh, uh, Turkish propolis, but I didn't have the opportunity uh, to meet uh, Professor Sevji before. Uh, this time it is online and I wish that next time it will be face to face, inshallah. 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 <laughs> I hope. <laughs> I hope. Uh, so Professor Sevji, the floor is yours. Uh, yes. Uh, can I share my presentation or? Yes, yes. Professor, you can share your uh, presentation. Yes, yes. Can you see all yes. the page? Yes, it's in full oh. screen. It's no okay. Okay, okay. Yes, today I will tell you about our antimicrobial activity studies on Anatolia or Turkish honeys. Uh, a shortly uh, presentation uh, it will be take. Uh, pardon, pardon, yes. You know, propolis uh, is a kind of bee products uh, have a high uh, antimicrobial potential and antioxidant, antiviral, anti-inflammatory uh, potential. We use propolis as uh, extracted uh, with uh, ethanol and another solvents, not uh, raw propolis. You know, uh, Turkey, uh, is very uh, <clears throat> uh, <clears throat> different uh, region located in a temperate zone uh, across uh, Africa, Asia, and Europe uh, between. And uh, we have uh, several uh, floral uh, plants and uh, the honey bees, honey bees use it and uh, we have a very different kind of propolis and honey and another bee products also and we are studying about uh, the bee products analysis and bioactive properties and apitherapeutic potential also and uh, until uh, 15 years, uh, we study Turkish propolis and another bee products. And we um, find that uh, Turkish propolis, especially ethanolic propolis, uh, uh, very high uh, bioactive contains very high bioactive uh, molecules, uh, and especially flavonoids and uh, we study different solvent uh, systems with propolis and uh, for example water soluble propolis uh, olive oil soluble propolis and 
ethanolic propolis also. And we find that um, actually ethanolic propolis, especially uh, 70% propolis uh, have uh, has a uh, high flavonoids uh, contents and our region propolis also contains high caffeic acid and caffeic acid phenylester, crisin, pinosamprin, quercetin, uh, flavonoids especially. All uh, propolis samples uh, from different uh, uh, region of Turkey we uh, we uh, detected uh, for uh, flavonoids also and we know uh, propolis uh, have several uh, biological active uh, properties but in my opinion uh, the best uh, biological active propolis of pro uh, propolis is uh, antimicrobial uh, potential uh, propolis. And uh, we, in this uh, review article, uh, it was um, say that uh, 600 antimicrobial activity, uh, microorganisms propolis uh, killed and uh, uh, affected 600 microbial activity. Um, uh, microorganisms, and this is a uh, review. And uh, our study also showed uh, actually propolis have high uh, potential antimicrobial effects uh, on different um, microorganisms. For example, this is the uh, this, this is the first study, antimicrobial study on uh, propolis, and I am not uh, antimicrobialist, I am biochemist, but my uh, collaborate uh, friends, uh, we, we are a good team and uh, we are study uh, cell culture and uh, uh, en enzyme inhibitions and uh, a lot of, and uh, my uh, study uh, friends, uh, good friends, uh, antimicrobial uh, professor uh, Şengül uh, Karaoğlu and uh, Ülkü uh, Hanım, and we uh, find uh, a good results, and we uh, have uh, a lot of uh, articles about these studies. And uh, for example, this study uh, with uh, uh, 20, 20, uh, 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 20 and 10 years and uh, different uh, Turkish propolis have showed high antimicrobial activity about the uh, microorganisms, E. coli, Staphylococcus aureus, uh, albicans, etc. And another study, our study studies, Especially, we focus on uh, uh, Helicobacter pylori uh, inhibitions studies and uh, with Anatolia and propolis. And uh, we have uh, several uh, articles about the studies and uh, we uh, find that uh, the bacteria, uh, you know, habitat in uh, gastric systems and uh, propolis showed a good uh, inhibition effects uh, the bacteria and we uh, used uh, several uh, um, uh, samples from uh, take it from uh, gastric uh, and uh, and uh, propolis especially uh, chestnut propolis uh, showed the highest uh, antimicrobial activity on the helicobacter and uh, inhibit also uh, ureas uh, enzymes. You know, ureas enzymes uh, secreted from the uh, bacteria, helicobacter, and the bacteria uh, only uh, stay in uh, stomach 
with the enzymes, uh, ureas, and uh, propolis killed the bacteria and uh, by the ureas enzyme, enzyme inhibition, we uh, uh, find uh, the uh, uh, results and also. And uh, another study, our uh, group study, uh, different uh, honeys and propolis samples, uh, again, uh, Anatolia, and uh, we find that, uh, and we compare it with uh, different region honeys and uh, propolis, for example, Brazilian propolis and Manuka honeys and another uh, propolis and uh, Turkish propolis. And uh, we find that uh, Turkish propolis especially uh, affected gram negative, gram positive, and other uh, fungus, yeast and fungus uh, killed the uh, microorganisms also. And uh, another study, our groups, uh, is uh, we tried uh, propolis uh, bound, uh, bound and we used three-dimensional di propolis sodium alginate scaffold. And the uh, results showed that propolis uh, bonds uh, affected uh, some pathogenic bacteria also. And uh, we, it will use it as uh, eight work. And another study, uh, with uh, wound, uh, and we uh, you, uh, we uh, we want to use it, uh, some propolis. Uh, uh, we save uh, resin, uh, and uh, after extracted propolis, the uh, waxy uh, mixture we don't use. Uh, we use it, the uh, resin, uh, maybe if use it as protect uh, wood, uh, some wood materials. Uh, and uh, the, our study with uh, forest engineering uh, academic um, uh, friends, with uh, um, Chala, Akjay, and Emre Birinci. And uh, they find that uh, propolis uh, uh, protects uh, wood uh, from uh, antifungal destruction also. It is a good uh, finding. And another study, our group study also, with uh, propolis shaving gum systems. And we use it propolis uh, for uh, shaving uh, production. And uh, our results uh, showed that the shaving gums with propolis uh, showed uh, Streptococcus mutans uh, uh, affected Streptococcus mutans. You know, the uh, bacteria, the microorganisms, is very uh, effect uh, active oral health also. And another study with uh, Nariman uh, and uh, Sequini, and this is the first time I um, uh, show uh, her. Uh, nice to meet you, uh, and also. And uh, comparative study, Algerian and Turkish propolis, uh, antimicrobial and antioxidant properties also. And uh, we show, uh, show that uh, both of the propolis samples, Algerian and Turkish propolis, affected Staphylococcus aureus, E. coli, Pseudomonas originals and uh, Cleopsania polymina, and also. 
And uh, we are study also uh, oral and dental health with propolis. And this is the first study, our group. And propolis uh, especially uh, affects uh, on uh, oral bacteria, uh, such as uh, we compared uh, the results uh, uh, another um, uh, agents, uh, agents uh, used in uh, mouth uh, health. And for example, this is the ethanolic propolis and uh, chlorhexidin, chloroxid, uh, sodium hypochlorite, uh, chlorhexidin used as a, a protective uh, uh, agent in a dental dentist. And we have find uh, a good re uh, results and ethanol propolis can be used uh, in uh, oral health also. And we are study, uh, uh, this study uh, now still uh, different uh, microorganisms with dentists also. Uh, our uh, last antimicrobial uh, studies about uh, anti corn sensing, uh, anti biofilm, anti swarming uh, activities with uh, different uh, Turkish propolis, and especially we focus on uh, chestnut propolis. You know, chestnut trees or forest is very valuable, and chestnut honey have higher uh, anti higher uh, total phenolics and high high higher antioxidant antimicrobial uh, effects and chestnut propolis also have the same effects uh, higher antimicrobial higher antioxidant and anti-inflammatory uh, effects and you know uh, turkey especially uh, coast of um, Black Sea uh, region uh, and uh, have uh, a lot of uh, chestnut uh, forest and we uh, our um, be uh, keepers uh, collect especially chestnut propolis chestnut uh, pollens chestnut uh, honeys also, uh, they know uh, the importance of chestnut products also. We uh, showed that this is the article in, um, uh, not uh, published, but uh, we sent uh, for publication. And maybe next times I will show the article also. And uh, anti corn sensing activity is very important effects, uh, you know, because uh, the uh, 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 agent uh, propolis, especially uh, caffeic acid and caffeic acid film ester, uh, broke. Uh, 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 protects uh, from. Uh, communication, uh, uh, one bacteria and another bacteria between. And uh, we use it also uh, ethanolic propolis and commercial ethanolic propolis uh, samples uh, uh, that uh, may be affected or not affected, but we found that uh, especially ethanolic propolis uh, is very affected for uh, anti corn sensing activity and anti biofilm activities. And uh, cannot. Okay. And we use it three uh, microorganisms, especially resistance uh, for many uh, antibiotics. Chromobacterium violence, Chromobacterium violence, uh, another uh, sush, and Pseudomonas aeruginas, and antimicrobial activity results showed that uh, ethanolic propolis samples uh, is very are very affected 
uh, on the bacteria. And uh, you uh, can use the uh, inhibition zones also. And uh, we are study also uh, antiviral uh, properties uh, on uh, uh, propolis. And, you know, uh, propolis have a good antiviral agent. And we uh, study the, during the uh, pandemic uh, period. And we uh, showed that uh, propolis is very affected on uh, Aja2 receptors uh, and uh, another study and our group study, in vitro study and molecular ducking studies showed that uh, especially uh, some flavonoids, uh, uh, caffeic acid um, and crisin uh, and pinosamprin, flavonoids have uh, effect um, AG receptors and uh, targeting uh, spike proteins also. Uh, molecular ducking and another uh, in vitro study uh, showed uh, propolis is very uh, high potential to against uh, COVID uh, virus. And uh, also we are, uh, we are a good team also, um, nearly uh, 15 uh, person and we have a, a journal uh, made uh, until uh, three years and we uh, about uh, journal of apitherapy and nature these natural products uh, we accept from uh, 20 and uh, 18 and we are uh, wait your um, uh, articles uh, for publication our turkish uh, journal at the beginning uh, stage this journal and uh, we have i have also sent my regards, my salam uh, from the uh, small city Trabzon, and we are uh, near the uh, Black Sea region, East Black Sea, uh, and uh, very uh, small and very uh, green uh, city, and. Uh, Thank you for your uh, attention. Okay. Thank you, Professor Sevgi. Thank you. Thank Thank you. you. Merci, Sevgi. Merci, Sevgi. Merci beaucoup. Hein? <laughs> Très intéressant. <Oui>. Very bien. <laughs> <laughs> Turkish uh, had a, a very interesting vegetation and uh, consequently uh, propolis will be very interesting uh, regarding both chemical and uh, uh, biological uh, part in particular uh, antimicrobial activity. I think uh, Turkish will, uh, is one of the good uh, propolis in the world uh, in this field. Thank you. Uh, Professor Sevji, we have uh, one question from the chat. Uh, the question is uh, from Wonja, and she uh, wants to know, do you know uh, 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 or are there studies on antibacterial properties of propolis from the plant which produces better honey, made honey in Turkey? This is the question. Rhododendron honey. Uh, I don't understand actually the uh, questions. Uh, you know, my English is not good. <laughs> no, it's good. No, no. Uh, my no. Uh, listening is not good also. Uh, I can write, but uh, listening is weak. Uh, and uh, I don't understand actually the uh, questions, uh, but I can write uh, the uh, people uh, how to uh, answer. Okay. 
Okay, you can answer uh, directly on the chat. You can see the uh, question and answer okay. directly on the chat. Uh, can he or she uh, write me uh, and I will uh, uh, answer, okay? Okay, so please, Wonja, send your question directly to Professor Sevji and she will answer you. Okay. Neriman. And we are also open a collaborative study also. Okay. okay. I will come, uh, Sevgia, I will come uh, to your university soon, yeah. inshallah. Uh, we are waiting. Yes, yes, I will come and I will send my students because we are, we are working also on antiviral activity of propolis, but we should make some analysis of cytokines. Do you make analysis of cytokines and interleukin, the NF alpha? Yes, yes, yes. I know. Okay. Oh, okay. I know. So, I know. Thank you. So, of course. So we will uh, make this collaboration because I know you uh, since ten okay. years ago. So you especially, should have a man and yes, with the ladies group. Uh, not uh, it's good because Stefan is the leadership, uh, but <laughs> okay. you, you should make the working group also. Uh. Yes, yes. Very interesting, very interesting. Thank you, Sevgi. Very interesting studies with the uh, wound protecting um, effects of propolis. It will be very interesting to protect our uh, our mosque, our uh, ancient uh, uh, ancient monuments. It's very very interesting with this protection of wound. With mm -hmm. yes, very interesting data. Thank you very much. Thank you. Professor Badia, would you like to introduce our next uh, speaker? Uh, yes, yes, no problem. Okay. Yes, so it's very interesting, this uh, session one uh, on propolis, very good uh, impact on propolis with dentistry, with the uh, antibiofilm and all uh, uh, antibacterial effects. So let's go to the session two on people and be bread. And it's my pleasure to introduce uh, uh, Professor Adriana Cristina from Romania. The title of the conference is Antimicrobial and Antioxidant Activities of Natural and Fermented Bee Pollen. So, Professor Adriana, the floor is yours. Um, hello to everybody. Uh, first of all, I want to say that I'm very glad to be here today with you. A very interesting, uh, the was were very interesting the presentation until now. I uh, I heard. Uh, I heard um, attentively. Uh, now I will share my screen. And please let me know if you can see what I uh, am sharing. Yes, it's perfect, Adriana. It's OK? Yes. OK, thank you. Uh, well. Uh, nowadays, there is an increasing interest uh, regarding honeybee products, especially uh, their bioactivity and the implementation in um, alternative medicine and apitherapy. Generally, when we talk about uh, bee products and especially um, about their antimicrobial activity, uh, we think about propolis, <laughs> which is very known to be the natural antibiotic of bees. Uh, however, there are also other bee products that have important antimicrobial antioxidant activity, for example, bee pollen and bee bread, which will be the topic of my, uh, of my talk uh, for today. So uh, I will start with a short, short description. Um, bee pollen, it's the only, as you know, it's the only source of protein and lipids uh, and the main source of macro and micro minerals for, uh, for the bees, for the honeybee colony, while nectar and honeydew is the main source of carbohydrates. Similar amounts of pollen are stored also in the honeycomb, similar like uh, nectar um, in, a, in a colony, uh, generally are collected around 10 or 26 uh, kilo of pollen uh, per uh, season. Uh, okay, as you know, uh, bee bread refers to the collected pollen that is processed by the honey bee, fermented and stored in the honey comb. Um, honey bee forage unload the pollen pellets they carry back in the hive directly into the empty cells of the comb. 
between the broad cells and the honey cells for forming a typical band of bee bread uh, available for immediate consumption for the bee, for the nurse's bee who produce royal jelly and feed the, the, the mat. It is assumed that fermentation of the mixture and possibly the predigestion of the pollen grains, it is done um, by adding B enzymes, as well as the B bread microbiota preserve uh, B bread uh, from promote its natural, its, uh, nutritional, uh, its nutritional value. Uh, some uh, picture with uh, our uh, bee bread. Uh, as uh, you probably know, the transformation of bee bread into um, the bee pollen into bee bread takes place in several uh, stages. First, the development of aerobic bacteria, uh, then the development of anaerobic bacteria, lactobacillus species. Uh, and uh, in the end, the, develop, the development of yeast, uh, such saccharomyces, who uh, can um, actually give the specific taste of the, of the bee bread. Uh, it's a less studied aspect, the microbial community of bee bread. Uh, it could produce their own antimicrobial compounds. As we know, uh, some species of lactobacillus can produce some um, bioactive compounds. It's actually a um, uh, field uh, which, in which we are now starting to do some experiments in our laboratory. Um, and uh, there are significant less data about, uh, about this thing and about beet bread compared to other bee products. Um, the aim of this study uh, was that the determination of antimicrobial and at antioxidant activity of different um, type uh, of bee bread collected from different parts of Romania. Uh, it's uh, actually um, this part of the antimicrobial and antioxidant activity, a part of a bigger project that we had in the, in the Romanian lab. Um, and also the termination of phenolic compounds with bioactive action, because we want to explain the um, antioxidant and the antibacterial activity. And uh, we, uh, we do also this uh, type of analysis. Um, a few things about the chemical composition of bee bread and bee pollen, because it's very, very similar. Um, bee colletic pollen and bee bread are appreciated mainly because of the high nutritional value. Uh, both products are rich in uh, proteins, essential amino acids, but also carbohydrates, sugars, fatty acids, including uh, the well-known uh, omega-3, omega-6 fatty acids, which are the essential ones vitamins, um, micro and micro elements. In addition, they are regarded as functional foods um, because they are rich also in uh, bioactive compounds such as phenolic compounds, uh, flavonoids, uh, other kind of um, vitamins. Um, also, um, they... Um, have uh, the prebiotic component because of the bacteria of the lactic bacteria, uh, the fiber, uh, which gave the prebiotic activity, the carotenoids, the organic acids. So it's a very, very uh, complex, uh, are a very, very complex product. Um, also, the energetic value uh, is very, it's very high uh, for both uh, bee pollen and, uh, and bee bread. Uh, another important aspect when we talk about bee bread and bee pollen, it's uh, the microbiological control. This because we know that sometimes the microbiological load is very high due to the fact that the, bee are, the bees are collecting bee pollen from everywhere, from a lot of plants, from a lot of flowers. So uh, sometimes maybe a, pro a problem um, caused by fungi and their toxin. But if we store this product 
but in the refrigeration or in the freezing condition, uh, it's everything okay, it's, uh, it's no problem. But generally, it's good to do uh, some um, checking uh, analyze, such as the total number of germs, total number of yeast and molds, prebiotic identification, and even toxins uh, like mycotoxin to, to check to, and to see that everything uh, it's, uh, it's okay. This uh, was the part for the control, microbiological control of the, of the project. Okay, uh, the chemical composition uh, of the bee pollen and of uh, bee bread depend a lot, a lot, a lot of the bot botanical and geographical origin. Uh, even the climate changes, the soil type, the season, the weather, uh, the um, beekeeping management can influence the um, quality uh, and the quantity of all uh, these uh, chemical parameters. Um, various studies have shown that bee bread are very, that bee are, bees, sorry, are very selective when collecting uh, pollen. And the most of uh, the pollen collected come from uh, only a few plants. Uh, but uh, even uh, in this case are a lot, a lot of, uh, of plant species, uh, even if we talk, even if we think uh, for uh, the whole world. And the uh, diversity is very, very high. The this is why the identification of botanical origin of both uh, bee pollen and bee bread, it is very important to explain the um, biological activity, the nutritional content, the antioxidant, antibacterial properties, because if you look uh, at the studies, there are a very, very, very big variability of all, uh, of all this data. Um, and all are directly um, dependent of the botanical origin. And uh, in the past, here is a, a picture for uh, uh, with uh, bee bread at the microscope. In the past, there was um, there were some uh, some authors who claimed that uh, pollen grains during the fermentation process are broken. But uh, this, uh, this claim was not supported. Um, and uh, there was many, many authors who um, say that it's not, uh, it's not true. Uh, this is a picture with um, some of the samples who um, are included in this, uh, in this study. Um, and uh, I don't know if you can see very very good are a lot of um, a lot of uh, plants who were uh, mixed uh, in this uh, in this bee bread. Uh, I put another diagram to see the the bigger the greater variability. Uh, actually, uh, in the nineteen in the nineteen analyzed samples, we find thirty two different plant families of pollen. Um, and uh, they are uh, represented uh, in this uh, in this uh, image. Okay. Um, next, I will talk a, a little bit about the polyphenolic content, who are made by um, spectrophotometric method, falling chocolate tail method. Uh, you can see uh, that uh, the variability uh, of the 19 samples of uh, bee bread, it's very, very uh, high and even um, more in the flavonoid content, also spectrophotometric method. Uh, you can see that is a big, 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 big difference between the, the samples. All of this because uh, of the fact that um, the plants from uh, which came the bee bread were very, very different. And the mixture was, was very, very different. But the values are very good. Um, and uh, we obtain good results in the antioxidant and antimicrobial activity. Um, I highlighted the, the higher ones. Uh, if uh, I remember good was the Salix, the Fabacea family who had the best uh, or the higher content in this uh, kind of, of compounds. Uh, also, we check on HPLC um, to see what kind of flavonoids uh, contain our samples. 
uh, we find the generally were uh, glycosides of the of the flavonoids and the, of the uh, phenolic acids. Uh, here is just a part of the of the compounds, only the major ones who had the biggest amount, but the variability was uh, was really really great. And uh, this is uh, the way we can we try to explain the big uh, antioxidant activity and uh, the um, antimicrobial activity. Uh, we test the antioxidant activity using three different methods: the DPPH um, method, FRAP method, and TAC method. Uh, as you can see uh, between uh, the methods, it's a big difference. This is because we use different free uh, radical uh, for uh, highlight the scavenging activity. Um, the stability of radical is different, but we obtain good, uh, good results. Um, and uh, we uh, can uh, show that uh, our sample, the tested samples had a, a really high um, antioxidant activity. Uh, in the FRAP, um, in the ferric uh, um, reactive, the um, antioxidant activity was a little bit lower, but in the ABTS and uh, the PPH radical, the activity obtained, uh, the obtained activity was uh, really, uh, really good. Uh, we highlight uh, some, uh, some samples that uh, had the best, uh, the best activity. And uh, Again, if I remember good, was the, the salix who had uh, the predominance in, this, uh, in these samples. Okay, regarding the antimicrobial activity, we use a little bit different uh, methods uh, and not the classic one with the diffusimetric uh, assay. We use the spectrophotometric method. Um, basically, we measure the absorbance uh, who is directly proportional with the uh, bacterial growth during 24 hours. And we measure from 15 minutes to 15 minutes uh, to see what happened with the bacterial growth in, um, in our uh, test. Uh, we use also uh, gram-positive and gram-negative bacteria. And we use uh, the well-known uh, Staphylococcus aureus, uh, Salmonella, Pseudomonas, but also a bacterial strain that affect uh, honeybees that are pathogen for honeybees, such as uh, Bacillus uh, laterosporus, uh, Bacillus, uh, Penibacillus alvei, and Penibacillus larvae, to see if um, sometimes the the bee the bee bread is used uh, even for uh, medicine in the hive not only for us for the for the people uh, i will show some um, some results about this antimicrobial activity uh, here it are the results for Escherichia coli, Salmonella, Enteritidis, and Pseudomonas aeruginosa. Uh, you can see the relative growth inhibition. Uh, with other words, uh, the higher the bars are, the good the inhibition is. Uh, we obtain really good results on, um, on Salmonella Enteritidis and on Pseudomonas aeruginosa, who was very surprising for us. We were expecting uh, a little bit uh, uh, something else, but uh, the results are very, very promising. Uh, gen generally, if we look, uh, all the um, tested samples had a good um, inhib inhibition growth, but especially um, the sample 2, 11, and uh, 16 were, had uh, a, a very good activity in, uh, in this uh, bacterial um, type. Also, in the case of uh, Staphylococcus aureus, Bacillus cereus, and uh, Bacillus laterosporus, um, the situation was uh, better than in the case of uh, the previous I show. Uh, you can see that all samples had a very good activity, and um, there has a, a relative inhibition growth in all, uh, in all the cases. Um, in the case of Penibacillus alve, Penibacillus larvae, and Teropocus fecalis, who are generally more fragrant in the, in the bee disease, uh, we observe that Penibacillus 
to Achilles albae was the more sensitive uh, in the case of all, uh, all the samples. Uh, we know that antimicrobial resistance is a global uh, emerging treat. So uh, there is a great need for new antimicrobial products. Uh, the results show that all, uh, all BPRAD uh, samples tested had significant antimicrobial activity, uh, especially against gram-positive bacteria, but also as you can uh, see uh, in, the, in the presentation, uh, the gram-negative were uh, well, a little bit sensitive. Um, of course, the results are very, very different, and we uh, associate this uh, variability with the different botanical origin. Um, the extract that we made for a test and to obtain this data were aquarius extracts, so were made in water, but we test also um, the option of alcohol, ethanol, ethanol or methanol, but we want uh, to influence the bacterial growth and to obtain a false positive result. So uh, we use only the, the water extracts. But uh, of course, there are uh, differences uh, if we choose another uh, another solvent. Um, in the fact, uh, all the um, the biological activities, even the antioxidant activity, can be explained by uh, the high content in uh, phenolic uh, acids, in uh, flavonoids, uh, and we think. Uh, regarding the, the study there exists already in the literature, that it's also um, a synergism of these compounds who made possible this, uh, these results. Uh, because um, generally, uh, if you uh, test separately these compounds, uh, you, not obtain, you are not obtaining the same results as uh, in the case of the, the mixture of, uh, of, all, of uh, all of these compounds. Um, another important thing when we, when we talk about bee pollen and bee bread is the di uh, digestibility sorry, of, uh, of this and the assimilation, because it's uh, well known that pollen uh, bioavailability bio of nutrients, it's a little bit uh, <laughs> with problems. Uh, especially if we consider that basically the, um, the bioactive compounds are inside the pollen grain, who, who is made uh, of uh, uh, exine and intin, uh, and uh, these compounds are very, very uh, resistant, even if in the um, stomach acidity and uh, all of this. Uh, but um, the study show that um, the fermentation uh, can open some pore of the pollen, and um, there are uh, good results uh, regarding the, assim uh, the um, assimilation of these uh, bioactive compounds um, in the human and in the bees. Uh, it's true that the study are a little bit uh, in the beginning, to say it like this, but uh, there is a promising uh, results, and uh, of course, uh, I um, it's important to uh, find and uh, research more in this uh, in this area. Uh, another um, another important things important things uh, is uh, is the fact that um, the bee bread microbiome his own microbiome play a very important and nutritional um, role uh, even for honeybees and for us. Uh, several studies demonstrated that bee bread microorganisms facilitate the enzymatic predigestion of the pollen, um, thus increasing the digestibility of this, uh, of this product. Um, of course, same authors suggested that lactic acid bacteria from the honeybee stomach are involved in the bee bread fermentation, and this is why uh, the bee bread is considered to be more bioavailable and more um, easy to assimilate uh, for us and even for bees. Um, but of course, uh, other authors, on the other hand, uh, think that uh, this uh, predigestion doesn't exist and it's only about uh, storage of the pollen for the winter and to have uh, what to eat uh, the bees. Uh, 
uh, to say like uh, like this. But of course, um, it's important that the this study that we made in vitro uh, will be done in the future also in vivo to to prove that this digestibility uh, can be made by uh, by us and by uh, by uh, by bees. Uh, as a conclusion, the therapeutic effect of, uh, of bee bread, the antioxidant one, the antimicrobial one, uh, anti-inflammatory, anti-cancerogenic, all of these do the uh, bioactive, uh, bioactive compounds. Uh, as you can see, bee bread uh, has a promising antimicrobial activity. Uh, however, uh, we know that uh, antimicrobial properties uh, expected uh, by bee pollen and bee bread uh, are highly variable. Um, this variability could uh, be attributed to a different chemical composition, which are directly correlated uh, to pollen um, uh, botanical origin. Uh, phytochemical concentration, including flavonoids, uh, phenolic acids, fatty acids, vary significantly um, among different uh, plant species. This is well, uh, well known. Uh, and given this enormous plant variability uh, in a wide range of habitats uh, where um, honeybees collect pollen, it is obviously that a tiny portion of this biodiversity uh, has been tested so far. Uh, so um, more studies should be conducted all over the world aiming uh, to bioprospect the novel antimicrobial compounds that can be found in, uh, in uh, bee pollen and in bee bread. Uh, and uh, uh, derived from the medical and uh, apitherapeutic uh, use. Uh, with this, I will say you thank you for your attention and um, hello from Cluj. <laughs> thank you very much. Excellent presentation, Adriana. You're welcome. Thank you, Adriana, for this uh, very interesting presentation. Very interesting because uh, you have also the viability of the bed. So it will be very interesting. Huh? to study the pharmacokinetic parameters huh, of yes, the yes. bee bread in vivo. It's very interesting. Uh, did yes. you assay uh, coenzyme 10 in bee bread? Uh, you can, uh, can repeat, please. I didn't hear you very well. Uh, Q10, 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 uh, coenzyme 10. Q10, enzyme Q10. Uh, no. It is very interesting. I'm sorry, but... I think my internet connection is not very good. <laughs> Sorry, you can say it again, please. Yes, coenzyme, coenzyme 10. Uh, coenzyme 10. No, I didn't study. No, 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 no. Uh, but uh, we have a new project. It's a postdoctoral project, uh, which I uh, have signed uh, in this spring. And we... Um, aim to do more investigation about uh, uh, chemical composition, including coenzyme, and uh, especially in the vi in vivo activity of, uh, of this product, of bee bread. Yes, you have, then, uh, we have uh, many articles of bee bread. I will send it to you. Huh? And I had, yes. I had been in Cluj Napoca in the laboratory of Professor Otolia. Oto, 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 Otilia. Yes, Otilia with uh, uh, Alina Faladi. Eh? Uh, it's very, very yes. nice laboratory. Eh? No, very we good. are working together with, with Otilia, with Professor Desmirian. Yes. Ah, and Rodira, Rodika, Rodika. Rodika also. No? Yes, Rodika. Ah. Rodika also. Yes. Ah, good. But yeah, I, I, don't meet, I don't meet you in Romania, no? In the conference in your no, Romania. No, no, no. We don't, no. We don't meet. No, no, no. Very Maybe important. next time, Professor Badia. Uh, you will be in phase with Stefan. We will organize with Stefan and you will select. It is very interesting to, 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 to study the pharmacokinetic uh, properties. Yes, of it's, a very, very it's our uh, purpose, purpose in the future. And also, I was gastric, in. Uh, yes, for gastric ulcer, it's very interesting. Uh, very interesting. Yes, 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 yes. We are very interested to see more about this in the next uh, project. 
Yeah, very good. Congratulations, very good. Thank you very much. Okay, Adriana. Acum poți să oprești share screen. Să, să... Okay. okay, stop share. Yes. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> Very good, very good. You are in faculty of medical or uh, in, uh, in which university uh, you are? In, um, in the faculty of faculty huh? of animal science and biotechnology. Oh, ah, good. Don't like us. Good. Animal science. Very good. It is very yes, interesting yes, yes, to yes. make a ex vivo, in vivo study in animals huh? with vasorelaxation, yes. with vasorelaxation because we have uh, the, the nitric oxide. It's very interesting uh, with animals. Yes, yes, yes. Very good. This huh? is why I say that in the future we we yes. have a new project in which we uh, try in vivo test also. Thank you. Very interesting. Bravo. Thank you very much, Professor. Okay, Nariman, we have uh, 10 minutes more, maybe, okay, seven, eight minutes, maybe uh, uh, until the, the lunch break. So uh, we can invite the people in the group, they can open their uh, uh, cameras and uh, maybe the microphones, and you can also put questions live now. Okay. So I see now Kelly from Australia. She's far away <laughs> from us. Okay, so any questions live, you can put also here to our speakers from this morning. Okay. You will have lunch in Romania in your house, Stefan? Yes, yes. Uh, online. <laughs> <laughs> ah, yes, yes, yes. We feed with information already. Yes, <laughs> yes very good. It's very nice uh, to meet online. It's also very interesting. Huh? Yes. You minimize costs and you minimize uh, all. Uh... Yes, it's, it's unbelievable uh, what can do for us this uh, internet Zoom. Yes. We are from so many different countries, so many different brains, yes. but all loving the bees. Everybody loves the bees. Yes. So they are so helpful for us. And uh, you, you saw in this first part, we'll see also in the afternoon and next day, we, we can save many, many lives with this behind products. Prevent and save, yes. Okay. Uh, we have uh, one question in the chat. Uh, uh, it's uh, from Ev Ervis Mema. How long can we store B or perga bread and storage methods? So how long can it's we for store... me the question? Yeah, yes, how long can we store B bread? Okay, uh, you can store for many years. Uh, it doesn't lose his uh, properties. So I don't know exactly exactly the period, but for sure three, four, even more years, it doesn't happen every anything with uh, the bee bread if it's in the freezer. Okay. And we talk about fresh bee bread. The dry one can it's not so complicated, but the fresh must be uh, kept in the freezer. In the freezer. In the freezer. Yes. yes. Is it? I have a question. Is it possible to mix it with the honey also, Adriano? Yes, yes, there are a lot of mixtures. To increase the, the bioavailability, yeah, to increase the bioavailability, yeah? it will be interesting. Yeah? Uh, I, I don't know if uh, we have uh, in the laboratory some mixtures of uh, different bee products with poll um, honey, with pollen, with bee bread, with propolis, uh, but we only analyze the nutritive value, not the bioavailability. But will be an interesting uh, thing to do to in the future. Why not? Yes. We tested in. Um, um, few years ago, the bioavailability of bee pollen and bee bread, if we put them in a fresh juice of orange and grapefruit. Oh. And it uh, doesn't affect too much the bioavailability. It's quite similar. But so in honey, we didn't test. So I don't know. Because we, we make some uh, with antibacterial effects of honey and uh, bee bread. But the article yes. is not uh, yet uh, finished. We have made this mixture with uh, with uh, 
some dilution and we have a very good result with honey, honey and vibrate. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Well, we know that honey is a very good solvent. Yes. So, <laughs> yes. yes. Uh, one more question for you, uh, Professor Adriana. Which vibrate okay. is better, fresh or dried? It's in the uh, chat. Yes, it's in the chat. Uh, of course, that better is the fresh one because uh, <laughs> it's a problem when the, you heat the the bee bread because not uh, every beekeeper control very good this temperature. If it's uh, dry at, at uh, 40 degrees at least, it's okay. But if the temperature is higher, you can destroy uh, some bioactive compounds. And this is why uh, we recommend the fresh one. Okay, thank you. Yes, yes. And uh, there is another aspect, uh, a dry bee bread or a, a, let's say an old bee bread loses more volatiles. Yes, it's true. Yes. It's so, true. Yes, so the, the beekeepers uh, must uh, uh, collect uh, bee bread before wintering and yeah. that is put it in the freezer in honey and or maybe in vacuum. And then uh, this is better than the bee bread which is collected in spring after the winter. So some, it's, some true, it's true, it's true. Yes, the taste also, and the, the fresh uh, frozen bee bread, it's wonderful in taste. It's like the fresh frozen pollen, isn't it, Adriana? Yes, it's true, it's true. And even more, we made a test uh, and um, we collected the bee bread in different periods of the year. And we find that in the, in the autumn, uh, the um, concentration of uh, polyphenols flavonoids was higher than in the spring or in the summer. But it's a small study and we want to extend to can be published to, to prove it. Okay, okay. It will be good to study also after the winter or the, the same. Yes. yes, 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 yes. To collect all of the year to see when it's uh, the, the best the concentration to say that okay so uh, yeah we, we didn't hear you very well adriana you have some some uh, maybe wi-fi connection problems um okay so there is one question here in the chat also uh, if the bread can cause thrombosis yeah, or uh, there are contraindications. So thrombosis, personally, as a medical doctor in the last 30 years, I have never heard about such a thing. On the contrary, the bread is acidic and the acids are against thrombosis. They are against, um, uh, they are improving the uh, fluidity of the blood. Okay. Okay. Okay, so thank you, Kelly, for mentioning here that your your uh, bee bread in autumn is better. It's nice uh, flavor. Yes, I saw in the chat. Okay, good. Okay, very good. So, uh, Professor Nariman, I, I would propose we, we go for the lunch break. Yes. What, what do you think? And yes. Uh, yes, we meet one hour later, exactly according to the schedule. We, we have been very well today, very well ordered. So the timing was very good. So thank, uh, I would like to thank all the uh, participants of this session about propolis. It was uh, uh, full of information, very interesting, uh, with a uh, lot of diversity uh, and uh, uh, a lot of exchange of uh, knowledge. I hope that it will be the same for the second session of propolis uh, that we will have uh, in, uh, in the afternoon. So uh, we will have a break of one hour and uh, let's meet uh, later. Okay. Yes, and for the for technical reason, we will stop the, the the conference now, the Zoom platform, to allow the recording, and uh, come back to the same link. You have the link to come back in Zoom. So come back in one hour again, and you will enter again. So so don't be worried because you close the platform now. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Can you write it, Professor? Uh, uh yeah on the chat or uh, can you write it on the chat so everybody can see it 
Yes. Uh, and we the... will close uh, 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 about uh, three minutes after. Okay, so I'll put again in the, in the chat the link to come back to Zoom. Okay, very good idea. Okay, so here is the link and let's put to everyone. Okay, but you have it from our communications, but just in case uh, you can uh, copy from it from the chat. The link is the same link, the same password, but take a bit of time to, to copy it. Okay. And, okay. prepare, and maybe prepare the questions for also for the next round tables. Okay, okay. Okay. Good, I believe everybody copied the link. Okay, see you soon in one hour and good appetite. Eat a lot of <laughs> pollen, you. pollen, big it, bread. It's not time of lunch here. Oh, <laughs> we are yes, not yes. hungry. <laughs> okay, okay, we will okay. eat later. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. Okay, see you soon. See you bye soon. Bye-bye.